The following program is an MLWRadio.com production. And welcome to a new episode of the Eastern Lariat Podcast, your show for news, notes, reviews, and opinions on the world of Japanese pro wrestling here on the MLW Radio Network, as well as on cagematch.net. I'm your host, Striga, as always joined by Dylan. Hello, Dylan. We are back. It's been a while. You know, Striga, I missed you so much. I was wondering where you were at. I was thinking, man, this guy, he travels all around the world, all around the country, all around the city. There's nowhere you won't go. But at the end of the day, you always come back around to me and all of the wonderful members of the Eastern Lariat family. Uh, shout out to everybody out there listening right now. Uh, I did something, too, that is always a favorite. I felt like it was that time. Uh, you know, it was that time again. It's something we haven't done in a while. And with it coming up on Halloween, one of my favorite holidays, one of the big day- days, I made sure to look at all of the countries that listen to our show. Oh, uh, wow. which is a, <laughs> I, I did some research. I did some digging and we've got some new countries to the list. I don't think we've shouted out before. So I, I need to give some love to them right now. First of all, Belgium is hey, in here. Belgium. Hi. That, that, that's a European country, right? It is. Yes. Jordan. Oh, Not wow. Jordan. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cyprus. Hello, Cyprus. Ur- Uruguay. Wow. That's right. Turkey. Going all over from from Europe to South America, Turkey. Yeah, Pakistan. We we got people all over the country. Yeah, Morocco, Thailand, Guatemala. One of my ex-girlfriends was from Guatemala uh, right (laughs) now. Shout out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, shout out, Sophia, right now. Uh, We got Egypt, Philippines, China. I, my, my homeland, your cultural homeland, China, turned join again. Middle Kingdom wrestling. Uh, yes, uh, uh, up, you're right. Yeah, it's yeah. It's incredible exactly. how how far spread we are in the world. So shout out to everybody listening to in, in all countries. Yeah, there's many, many more. Yes, uh, but but th- thank you to everyone wherever you listen. Also, Ethiopia, which we were the number one wrestling podcast in, and I I want to believe still are. I, I don't have that checked, but I, I, so. I will I will claim it regardless of if it's factual or not. Shout out to all the Ethiopians out there and all the people all around the world that love the Eastern Lariat and Japanese pro wrestling and just pro wrestling in general. Japan. Eastern, Lariats, whatever you love, wherever you're here, thank you so much for it. Thank you so much, and I, I'm always proud that we also have listeners from Japan listening to our fine podcast about this yeah, they were one of the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, right? The wrestling in the country uh, talked about by one guy from Germany and another one from the US. So that's really great, and I appreciate that very, very much so. And uh, we are getting right into these uh, topics that we have right now and originally my list of topics did not list new japan pro wrestling i didn't really have that on my menu for this one but you dylan you requested that you want to talk about your favorite promotion the promotion that you always defend against any sort of criticism and uh dylan what's it right now what one what do you want to defend in the in the kingdom of new japan pro wrestling I don't know if you've forgotten who I am in this little time or, or something. Are you just – are you – is this a fan fiction you're writing right now, Stringer, that we're talking about it? Because it's not reality. Oh, that, oh, oh. That, that, that's for sure right now. But really I, did, 
<laughs> I believe my exact quote was, let's gloss over this <laughs> to make sure that people know we, we didn't just, like, you know, forget yeah, that or something. People we're, know it exists, right? We're, Striga. When it, comes to, when it comes to, it does exist. It's not okay. a figment of our, our imaginations. No, it's not a fan fiction at all. Although I, I love all the fan fiction writers out there. I let me let it be known that I respect you uh, right now. But what I can't respect is some of the things we've seen in this company lately <laughs> with when it comes to New Japan Pro Wrestling. But you know what you don't understand, Striga, is that we, me and you, the Eastern Lariat, we're professionals. We are have to be considered one of, if not the top. Uh, language, English language, just language media sources. Top language um, podcasts, yes. Yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, Duolingo is not on our level when it comes to language podcasts, at least when it comes to pro wrestling. Uh, but we, we got to cover things. We can't just ignore yeah. stuff, even if it sucks, even if there's not a lot to say. But let's spend a couple of minutes on their big show and yeah. that big tournament that they've started recently as well. Exactly. So in... October so far, they've had, of course, the destruction in Rio Goku show and Royal Quest 3. And when I'm looking at the ratings for both shows, the ratings are very, very similar. Destruction in Rio Goku has a 6.64 and Royal Quest a 6.66 rating. And if I was rating the show, or if, if I had rated the show, it would have gotten a 5 out of 10 from me. Because it was a show that had a lot of matches, but very few of them were in any shape or form noteworthy. Especially not the main event, one of the... It, it got one and a half star from The Observer. And I, I wouldn't say it was really that bad, but it was just a nothing main event that didn't really have any dramatic arc or anything because you've seen all these tropes before and it the, the one thing that it had going for him it really lived by those including me by the way that had feared that they might be changing the title to evil <laughs> but in the end they didn't really buy into that because at no point in the eventual match i really had the feeling that evil would win it so it was really a, a very flat main event just just like that well, at least nobody laughed at it this time. Hey, yeah, if, if you want to count that as progress for, <laughs> from their last from match, all main event, that's that's okay. Yeah, I think the big story was the low number of, of yeah. for this show, like five thousand <laughs> in sumo. I mean, that's less than yeah. Uh, you know, it's a shocking thing in some ways, but not really. Uh, you know, you have to look at this rain now with Sonata. Uh, it's rough. I kind mm -hmm. of applaud them for trying something. But, you know, I think now we have enough data. You know, it's been seven months now. Uh, we can confirm not a great champion. <laughs> so, so not a... Yeah, we, we can we can confirm that in, in all the title matches, we can, of course, ex take the uh, Jack Perry match from Forbidden Door out of that uh, topic's out of that conversation, really, because it was just not included into any kind of storyline. It was yeah. just there. Yeah. But it was always the challenger that really dictated the pace of uh, the title matches, and really never Zanada as champion, who was like making making the decisions around the title, because every every time it was the other guy that was either more applauded two from the crowd or that even stole the title from Zanada and Zanada was the one <laughs> chasing even though he's the champion and um, I think we've seen this title run now and you said it, we've had enough, enough data and uh, I guess in, an, in, in another situation if that if it was the first half of the year if he had like let's see let's say he had won the title at Wrestle Kingdom I think they would have uh, would have found an out for the championship. But now yeah. that they are going to Wrestle Kingdom, there really is no real opportunity for an out. And they've laid out this storyline, much like you said in the preview that we did a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. They've la laid out the scenario around Zanada, Evil, and Naito. And that's the storyline that they are going with. And they are not known for 
abandoning their storylines that they've once started in the summer going to Sumo Hall. Uh, going to, uh, not Sumo Hall. Uh, yeah, the Dome. The other, the other big arena. Yes, the Dome. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, in some ways I applaud them for building the story. Uh, like, you know, a, a logical one, regardless of my feelings and Sonata as a performer, everything leading up to Naito getting the title at the Dome, it's, if you're an LIJ fan, this is very much like fan service to you, uh, pretty much. And they've decided mm. to go that route, and I I don't hate it uh, or anything like that. I just, for me as a fan, I'm not into it. And it's not successful. Like, Sonata is not a successful champion, regardless of any kind of match quality you want to say. I mean, look at what he did earlier in the year, all of his defenses, really. Like, even with Suji. I mean, that was a very poor number in June. And now you get this with Evil and nothing really in the tournament at all. The G1 was very low until the the final nights. And he was often in the main event of his A block shows. So you have to really look at him as not a draw and not very popular, to be honest, uh, right now. And I, but why would he be <laughs> at the end of the day when you, when you look at him? There's just, there's just nothing there with him as a champion, unfortunately. And Evil, we already know. All of that, like we already yeah. know, he's not over or popular or good. Like you know, and that's any any kind of questions. If you want to see somebody online say no, they're actually popular in Japan. No, they're not. Like, no, they're not. And they try to heat up. They try to heat up that angle with um, Kanemaru turning on just five guys and them getting Yuya Uemura in, which is a good decision, by the way. Like, yeah, like getting that. getting Uemura into that group makes uh, gives has an, an instant splash on the promotion because there's the new guy coming in and I'm really looking forward to what they are doing with him um at least for him they have a role but except for that it's just a group that really doesn't have anything going for them yeah he's going to become the main guy next year in the group I think in yes. terms of their focus yeah he's going to beat them all eventually uh, he's just going to beat all the other just five guys you wait more I guess so. Maybe it'll lose to Zanata or Taiji at first hand, but eventually he'll he'll be positioned above them. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 like he is the end game of all of that. Um, and we mentioned it on the the pre show. We talked about that. We might have thought maybe Ishimori would have been the the ex guy. Yeah, yeah. And he came back, just not in this, this role. No, just in his old role. Just once again heating up another story that we've seen before with Hiromu Takashi. So, yeah, uh, the junior title match. Unfortunately, uh, Lee Rush got injured, and so they had to change the title match around, and they changed it to a weird construction, I thought, because Mike Bailey seemed like this odd man out all the time in this match, and it just, was just a match between Yo and Takahashi, and Bailey was in for a couple of spots. That's uh, how how I took the match, uh, so I, I didn't really, I don't know, it was weird for me. Yeah, I didn't think this was a great match either. I, I know it's got some high ratings, and... Uh... You know, Dave gave it a uh, four and a half stars, which is mm. very, very high. Uh, but I'm more on your side. They worked all right together. There's nothing wrong with it, per se, especially for, you know, a make good type of match. Obviously, if Leo was there, you would think maybe it would be more spectacular. But as it was, I, I really just wasn't feeling it or this whole title reign. I mean, it's sputtering to the finish line, you know, if we're going to be pretty honest. I don't really sense any kind of great. I don't love that. I, guess, I mean, I don't want to make judgments before we get to the Dome match, because we don't know who that will be, ultimately. But I just wonder, at least with Ishimori, you had a very good story to go to go with. Like, coming out of the broken neck, or the, mm-hmm. you know, the, neck, the neck injury, yeah, like, yeah. come back. Uh, and we're just going to do it, like a power struggle, and, and mm-hmm. Ishimori probably will be irrelevant <laughs> as soon as that match ends, pretty much. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's able to recover. That was a very scary situation uh, in that Ishimori and Hiromu match. But in terms of a match quality, uh, I mean, I'm sure that'll be good. I haven't loved Hiromu. We talked about that in the last episode. I was just going to ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Hiromu, the, the last... I mean, even the match in, in Impro, I didn't think he was particularly great with, or any of his non-New Japan matches, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And especially... Yeah, I've said it a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the summer of him and of uh, El Esperado that I was really not into what he was doing. I saw the DDT show today where he attacked, uh, or not really attacked, he uh, <laughs> won the Iron Man Heavy Metal title from Katsuki Hirata, obviously going uh, towards their Sumo Hall match on November 12th. Uh, he was there, and this was a good storyline that 
they did here, a good deal with the Iron Man Heavy Metal title. That is something that was on the table when you saw the match at first, and I'm really glad that they went through with it, because with Hiromo Takashi and the Iron Man Heavy Metal title, there's a couple of, of funny skits they can do, and they can change it in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, Hirata, Hirata can win it back uh, without any trouble, without any hassle, uh, outside the ring, surprising Takahashi. So that's that's a good deal there. Really looking forward to the Hirata match, but except for that... Yeah, what's your feeling on Hiromo Takashi? You said it. He's still this junior champion. He's on this junior run that really isn't hot. They really haven't done a lot for the junior scene ever since Best of Super Junior. Is he is he someone that that you still think has upside going to the heavyweight division? I think he has a lot more upside in the heavyweights than if he stays in the junior heavyweight division, uh, which I don't think he has any left, to, to be honest, and I think this run has proven that. Um, do you think it's a, it's a, it's a motivation issue? Does he, does he want I do. to be any, anywhere else? That's a little conspiracy I have a little bit with him, because if you look at a lot of his stuff that he's done this year, I mean, obviously with the junior festival and all of that, everything publicly he portrays is – oh, I want to elevate junior heavyweight wrestling. Junior heavyweight wrestling is my life, and I love it, blah, 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 blah. But if you actually watch his matches, when he's not in New Japan, you're getting half effort at best. Mm-hmm. You know, like It doesn't seem like he's enamored with wrestling in any other place outside of New Japan based on his efforts. And something like Hirata, that has nothing to do with wrestling quality, like the same way it would with you know, Fu- Fujita Hayato, you know, at the end of the day, uh, which he has not proven to be able to be on this, the, those levels with, uh, you know, your Yamato's and, and things like that in the past that he's done. I'm just not really thrilled with his run at all. Um, I definitely think he has upside as a heavyweight if they were to move him in there and do some different things. But I mean, God, look at Ishimori. How many times have these guys wrestled? Uh, Desperado, you mentioned earlier, how many times have they wrestled? Don't, those aren't exciting matches or anything to really get riled up about, I would say. I think he needs to change bad, <laughs> like of anybody on the roster. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, quickly to the Fujita match in Michinoku Pro that was on October 15. I think I was on the on the higher end of those that liked the match for what it was. I gave it a 7 out of 10 in the end because yeah, I thought that's that the – yeah, I, I thought that they really did some good stuff in the match, especially towards the end of it. It was very long, though. I liked the sequences in which Hiromo Takahashi portrayed a little bit of a heel role, but I would have loved if they had gotten more into that because he was attacking Fujita's back that he famously, of course, had surgery on, cancer surgery, and... Hiromo Takahashi coming in as more of a heel in that situation would have been great, especially because some parts of the crowd were really living and dying with uh, um, Fujita making his comeback in the match. And there was this woman uh, sitting front row who was crying throughout the entire match. It was really emotional. And if they had gotten into that part of the match more, I think it would have been um, much more well received than it initially was, or than it in the end was. Uh, it was a fine match. Well done between these two, but uh, certainly not when you look on paper and just take these two on paper. It sounds like a dream match, but in the end, it was just wasn't it. Yeah, exactly. Everything you said was right, but even on Cage Street, the overall reception to this match was seven out of ten. Yeah. Oh, like at the end of the day, and when you see these names, you expect ten out of ten. You know, match of the year, and and. What for whatever reason, and I don't think it was Fujita that was the issue. I really think it was more Hiromu like that, and, and the length was a part of it as well. You know, you have to really mention that. But the fact of the matter is, whether it's this match or any of his other matches, I always think, man, Hiromu's coming in, and he. And what's really sad is that his first half of the year was so great that you have to wonder what, like, why has he fallen off so much in the second half? I don't know what it is. But I'm ready for this title reign to be over with one way or the other. And uh, I don't know, but who could they be going with? Now that we know Ishimori is the November candidate, who could it be at the Dome? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, Minoru Tanaka at the Dome on our last show because they've done this deal at the Junior Festival, right? Where he challenged Hiro Takashi. No, that was at the Glade uh, Sumo Hall. At the, show. At the Glade yeah. Show. Oh, yeah, okay. The oh, and they, by the way, they did announce too that he's going to have some kind of announcement. 
uh, in the next couple of days. They posted on their Twitter, uh, Glate did. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But they, they formulated it as an UWF announcement, not necessarily a, okay. like a, okay. like a so I But he is going to have some kind of announcement, so I don't know if that has anything to do with Hiromu. But he was the only one, again, I'm just thinking of stories <laughs> like the, for this. Because my fear is we're going to get Hiromu versus Desperado versus <laughs> Master Watto. Versus yeah. Joe. And then for, and for, and that like, could it actually be. Uh, maybe they some, somehow shoehorn Leo Rush into the match as well because he hasn't yeah. gotten his shot. I can I can honestly see them doing some sort of deal with Leo Rush at the at the dome now because that was really unfortunate. Uh, yes. But and other than that, I, I said it. They really haven't focused on anyone in the junior division in the last couple of months. So there is nothing there. Yeah, so this was a nothing match. Uh, like, uh, b- b- long story short of the uh, the Sumo Hall show. Uh, what was the was the, uh, the never match? What did you think of that? It was okay. Why did they change the title? I have no idea. I was shocked. I mean, I thought that the, t- the uh, tag team I titles... I, I, I wasn't surprised. I thought Fantasma and Hikaleo would win the tag titles. Yeah, yeah. But, th- but this... I mean, what is the upside here? <laughs> like, you know, like, I mean, no offense to Tonga. He's a fine, fine. But Finlay... Like, you spent all of this time building him up. And... Mm-hmm. I mean, this to me, this felt like, okay, we've given you guys your chance. You're not over. And we don't think you're doing very good. And it's time to pull the plug. Like that's what this felt like to me about War Dogs. Like this, this is the end of the line. That's so weird, right? When you, in contrast to that, look at other acts that are on a similar level over than the War Dogs, like the War Dogs, and they just pulled the plug out of the out of them with uh, two title changes. And Finlay seemed to be a project, and I, I would would say you really need to invest more time in in, in a project like him. Absolutely, you know. Then they they had him, you know, they had him drop the fall and uh, Royal Quest, like the next show. Yeah, uh, what well, it seems like they're not very happy with him, and I, I'm surprised. I, I liked his performance personally. Um, you know, we went over at the last episode, and and you know, you look at their roster of groups. There's just not a lot there, uh, you know, when it comes to groups that are over, and I. Again, uh, you know, we w- went back and forth a little bit about it, but I thought they were mm. doing all right. You know, like I, I didn't think that they, like I didn't think this was going to happen at the, at the end of the day for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, at I least just, they still have one title. Well, you know. And w- w- where would Tonga go? Like with the open way? Yeah, I he's, mean, he's having the title match with uh, Shingo Takagi in uh, Las Vegas in November. Uh, I could honestly see a title change there as well with uh, Takagi. Why not? I mean, this. But well, he's a better wrestler, so like we would want that. But uh, we would I mean, want it doesn't that. Matter. Like story storyline wise, neither no, of them are, doesn't are really doing matter. anything. Yeah, I mean, it, I, like I said, I would love to see Shingo get a singles match at the Dome if there's some sort of plan uh, for that that we don't know about. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just really surprised. But like I said, the match was average, like nothing special uh, at, at all. But. I was I, I was shocked at that title. I wasn't really <laughs> shocked. I don't know. It's just the Nether title, you know. It's just they do that kind of stuff from time to time. Just, I wouldn't really. I don't know if that's necessarily a, a, a signal of doom for Finlay. It depends on what they what they have for him at Wrestle Kingdom. If he's just in a uh, other class eight man tag match, then yeah. I think your your doom scenario is is very justified. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe they'll pull the wool over our eyes, and, and this will all be a part of a grand plan. But I, I think that, I like I said, that with this and the Royal Quest, him taking the fall of the War Dogs, like you had Coughlin right there if, if you wanted to shut <laughs> someone out, and it's like, oh, okay, I, I, I guess this this any of even them, and again that tag match was nothing. Like the the, the tag title match, um, I definitely think they see more in Phantasmo and Hikuleo than they do War Dogs, uh, though. I guess maybe, so. And how they they push them? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I uh, like. I mean, Kid really did good at the end of the G one, you know, and, and he has something there if they want to to do something with him. They really like Phantasmo, like <laughs> over overall. And he's all right. I I don't I don't hate him. Hikaleo, we kind of went over in the G one. He's kind of their new folly. I don't know. It's just very weird. Um, 
the TNA match was good. Like that was, was the, the best, best match, match of the show. Of the show. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah, so we... <laughs> sure. Sure, it was. I mean, six great wrestlers in this match. How could this be not good? I love seeing the machine guns uh, in in Japan. Um, but again, the problem is there was zero percent chance that they were going to win, you know, pin Okada or anything like that, or, or have a long term run. And this was a meaningless match, ultimately, except for quality, and they did a good job with it. I'd, I'd love to see them bring these guys back more. Uh, I don't know if they have any plans for that, but uh, that was a good match. But again, nothing. there's not there's any storyline implications. Like, we'll see what they have planned for the Dome. And I don't think these titles would be a part of it, because you think Okada would be in a, a singles match. So Yeah, how do you get this title off uh, Okada right now? Makes no sense, like, what, what they're doing. Uh, you know... Maybe that'll be Finley's spot. Like, they do a match of Power Struggle, the War Dogs versus these guys, and this is where they get their heat back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can have them do a six-man match, and then where would Tanahashi be the, the Dome then? Uh, I, they, I they, they've already announced the, the six-man tag title for Power Struggle. It's um, Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii against TMDK. Yeah. I think they should use that to maybe set up a TV title match at the Dome, like, uh, if they want to do that. Sure. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Like, these, these titles don't matter uh, at the end of the day. And then everything else, um, yeah, you had the War Dogs. They did have the junior tag titles, like you, you mentioned, so we can't completely write off War Dogs. Exactly, yes. Uh, <laughs> but we can write off the Intergalactic Jet, jet Setters for now. Because... They hate Kushida. Like, this guy <laughs> really hate Kushida. <laughs> Man. Wait, what about the tournament? For, they're going to set up the challengers for these belts. I mean, look at this. Look at this group that we see in this tournament. Until they announced uh, Musashi as the tag team partner for Yo, who stepped in for Leo Rush, I thought that the tournament was completely irrelevant. Now, with Musashi in, I have a little bit more interest, but I still don't think that it's any kind of tournament that I really want to follow. Exactly. Like it's still irrelevant. I'm but sure. It's... I'm sure there will be good matches. I don't question that. But is it really something that I I have the feeling that I miss something when I don't watch it? No. No, not not at all. Um, I mean, Sho and Kanamaru as a team setting up Bushi and Titan, Taguchi, DKC. Doki Taka, this team sucks. Like all, all of these teams suck. <laughs> so I don't even know if you're going to get a lot of great matches in this tournament. To be honest, I mean Musashi's great. Yeah, so psyched that he gets a spot in New Japan. That that's great, and they're doing more things. That's another thing we can jump to. Despite how lame this tournament is, and it doesn't even matter who wins. I mean, it's the t junior titles, but you're seeing them bring in a Musashi. You're seeing them bring in the Dragon Gate guys. Yes, Yoshi Kikato uh, and Mochitsuki Junior announced for. Power struggle as well. So they are doing one more, or I guess, I, I guess one more, or maybe more matches of the outsiders coming into New Japan Pro Wrestling, much like they did in Sumo Hall in uh, October. Do you think this may be like a regular thing we see going forward, like bring in some indie dudes or like you know smaller company guys to do do a match on big I, shows? I really hope so because it it really elevates. New Japan from uh, from where it usually is. It has a new perspective on some guys. It adds talent. It gives New Japan the opportunity to look at some of the other talent. It gives the other companies uh, and the wrestlers a bigger audience. So there, it, it really is a win-win situation. Absolutely. Like, I think it's a great decision all around. I uh, love seeing it. That was like the thing I was most excited about um, going forward, and may maybe we'll see some more guys coming in. I think there's got a lot of guys that would benefit from, you know, again, it's not like it's a, a main event level role or anything, but it, it's something, you know, it's, yeah. it's something to, you know, and what does it hurt? I mean, what are you losing? <laughs> I mean, another lame multi-man match with Yujiro? Like, I think we can live with, without that. <laughs> the, listen, do you want to see the Dragon Gate guys, or do you want to see Chase Owens and Tonga Loa? I do want to see the Dragon Gate guys. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So it's not like they're losing. But we're also going to see Tangaloa because in a singles match against David Finlay, Dylan, what's about what's it oh. with all these Tangaloa singles matches lately? He has become a project for this promotion. I don't know why or how, but he's gotten a consistent push like ever <laughs> yes. since the G1. And I'm again, I 
I don't hate him uh, or anything like that. It's just, you, are we really using your time for this that we could be using for so, so many other guys? I mean, we talked about it. You know, Hiromu has not really been doing anything major. Like, you you have guys on the undercard that you can look at. Yoshiashi Goto were not on this show, uh, the Sumo Hall show, but you found a spot there for, for those guys, and it's like, huh, I don't know. I mean, Tonga Loa, this could be his big push. Then maybe that'll be the the uh, the dome match, brother versus brother, Loa versus Tonga. Oh, brother, oh yeah, I can actually see that. And listen, those guys have been soldiers for the company. Right. Like yeah. you, you have to respect them. And I always say this about even with with Chase, it's the same way. Mm-hmm. Like the company, like say what you want about their talent or just as fans, but if you're from the office of New Japan and you work there then that means something to them. And that's why these guys get these big roles, even though maybe we don't see it. And I mean, in reality, like what you just kind of spin this back to what you said when I was talking about the Finley match. I, again, I was very surprised about the title change, but ultimately you're right. It's the never title. <laughs> like who cares in all reality? It doesn't really matter. It's not like it's a main event. They're just, you know, looking out for the guys they, they like and see that have done well for them and put in effort, and God bless them for it. But I don't need to see a Tungaloa push to 2023. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, the Sumo show really not really spectacular this time. Uh, just a the low number was the main talking point of that show, in my opinion. I, I that was very surprisingly low. Mm-hmm. Even, though, even though I kind of, you know, I, I I said it on the show that I really expect this to be a bad crowd. And you were right. <laughs> it was even worse than I imagined. <laughs> exactly. I was with you. I agreed with you. But even then, I didn't think it would be this low. No, no, no. I was really really shocked about that. That's the thing I was most shocked about on this show, actually. Exactly. To me, that was the main thing I would even want to talk about. <laughs> what about this, Stringer? We've talked about Sonata, all of this, as the champion. What if this Dome show, we come in on January 5th or whenever we record our, our mm-hmm. post the Dome show, Suddenly, what do you think their expectations are? Like, let me formulate it this way. What do you think I, their expectations are? Because I'd be getting a little shaky right now. If I'm, I'm a New Japan officer. I was, I would be getting shaky too. There's two ways to look at it. The one thing is what you've been saying all year is that they really would want to beat the Muto show. That's. When you're New Japan Pro Wrestling, when you're the market leader, that's what you should aim at. Then again, you have to look at your own product right now, and you have to be real upfront about what you're doing right now and what the product is able to do. So can you really go into a show like this and expect to beat one of the most landmark shows in Japanese wrestling in over a decade, can you? That's the question. With the restrictions still in place, it was only thirty thousand. They've beaten that multiple times before before the pandemic had happened. Mm-hmm. And I think they would have imagined and wanted there to be a big uprising and groundswell for the first dome show without these kind of restrictions. Whether it'll happen or not, I mean, like I said, with the way they've built the show has not been great. I would say like unless you are you have to be a very diehard LIJ fan to really I I think be into this story at the end of the day. I don't or like a big Naito fan. And maybe that'll be enough. Like Naito is their most popular guy at the end of the day. And this show is bent, built all around him. And hopefully by the end of Power Struggle they'll set some stuff up. Like you said, we mentioned AEW might have a big role in that show. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know Okada's gonna be on Dynamite th- this week. Maybe set up him and Brian Danielson. But do you think they get the 30,000? It's tough. It's it's really tough because <laughs> it's Sonata as champion. But at the same time, it's also Naito. Hmm. I think... I, I think so- they will. I think I think Naito's a big enough star. I, I think they will. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I think after Power Struggle. After Power Struggle is a good point to yeah, sit right. back and really look at what the audience might be. 
Because after that, they will have announced most of the top matches. And then we'll can re- we can really ev- evaluate what these matches are worth yeah. and what they can do. And if, if they get Okada in a big singles match, if they have Naito and Okada in a big singles match, that's, that's a hook. Definitely a and, hook. And the possibility of Omega and Osprey. Which, yeah, uh, exactly. Being, yeah. Uh, which yeah. I, I think will, that'll mean even more than Okada and, and Danielson, in, in my opinion. But uh, and we don't know. Again, maybe none of this happens. <laughs> and everything falls through. Somebody gets injured. You know, we we don't know yet. So that is a good point on your part. But uh, let, okay, let me ask you this: Do you think, considering Sonata, we is clearly a cold champion and not popular, like that's undisputed at this point? Is Naito enough to overcome that to have a, a great? show like are, are him in the main event is that enough or will they need to load the undercard to make this work i think what you just said about naito with naito has proven that numerous times that he can be a considerable draw on his own Including at that Mudo show that we're talking about. Including at that Mudo show, yes. He was there. He was in the main event of that show. And he did beat Muto in this final match. So I think that on his own, he's able to do that. I do too. And that's why that's why I kind of said that. Like the, As soon as I thought about it a little bit, I thought, mm-hmm. like there, maybe this won't work, but I, I believe in Naito as a draw. I think that he, he's still the most popular guy. Look at how the G1 final went uh, with him in there. I mean, that did way better than the rest of the tournament, uh, pretty much, with him in the main event. So ah, it's an interesting thing to talk about. Much more interesting than the show. Yeah, and uh, also much more interesting than, I think, Royal Quest. Um it was a show that was headlined by two singles matches. The one was Tomohiro Ishii and Shingo Takagi. And I thought that they had one of their better matches. We've said it here on the show numerous times that we're really not into the matches that they had in the past. I thought they, they did well for themselves. Um, it's really nothing that you've not seen from either guy. They run into each other a lot, lot in this match. They... Uh, kick out of at one they do a lot of lariats uh, that's that's what they did in this match too it was a good match and then we have the uh, Zack Saber and Will Osprey match that got rave reviews online and I watched it just uh, uh, last night I thought it was a great match I, I really enjoyed it but I I'm nowhere near the match of the match of the year level call that the, this match got uh, I thought you had, had some weaknesses and you we've talked about it off the air really didn't really like that uh, Zach did let Osprey free numerous times out of the submissions that he had in the middle of the ring because it didn't really make any sense to me. Uh, wrestling, the wrestling itself was in parts, of course, spectacular and they are really great at the style that they are doing. Uh, Zach was a great opponent for Osprey on that night and Osprey had a great speech afterwards. I'm just not on the, on the high end of these, of these reviews. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, we've I think we've been pretty fair to Osprey this year. You know, if it was working in New Japan and obviously everything he's done around the world, a lot of people, you know, at the end of the year, he'll be a lot of people's probably pick for the most outstanding wrestler, uh, you know, all around the world. And I think that's great for him and his fans. Uh, historically, I've been really down on him, uh, but I think he's really – like in the G1, I thought he was one of the best guys in the whole tournament, to, to, to be honest with you. I thought he did a great job. You have to give him his due uh, for that. This match, I wouldn't consider on the same level as his best G1 matches, uh, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, and I, and I liked the match well enough. It was all right. Um, Zach did okay in the tournament. I think I'm probably more low on him, too, than most people in, in general. But you compare this match to the Suji match last month that Osprey had, uh, and I thought there was so much more heart in that, whereas this was more a collection of cool stuff that happened in <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. great spots. And I thought the other one was a complete match. Uh, even the Marfuji match that Osprey had, which I, I, I liked it a lot, don't get me wrong, uh, but I didn't, I didn't think it was a match of the year or anything. Me but I think, there was, I think there was more heart in those matches than this one. This was more like two guys who, like, you know they know each other so well. They're they're practically wrestling robots in there doing it, and that's cool and all. But it didn't grab me 
Um, but still, I mean, I give them credit. I mean, they did a great job for what they wanted to do. I just didn't think it was a great match, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was... I thought... I don't necessarily agree that they... that this match didn't really have the emotional attachment to it. I think they... the crowd was very much there for it, and I think both guys... Not just, like I said, the, the promo that Osprey had after the match showed that they really went into that with all their, all their heart, I think. Yeah, I, I, I might be a bit higher on that one, on that match than you. Uh, but that's, that's okay too, if you don't really. Yeah, maybe like a seven out of ten would be where I'd have it. It might be going to eight. Yeah, eight, eight, I think. I mean, that's a great match. Yeah, it's a great match. It was, it was, I thought. Yes, uh, so that's, uh, an overview over New Japan Pro Wrestling, we've talked about it much longer than I actually thought we would. The main thing of this is that it's got a 666 rating. <laughs> yes. Match, so that means... Please don't change the rating anymore. Brit Rez is satanic, is <laughs> what this means, and we do not want any of it on our show. I guess it's Halloween. Okay. It's okay to be more dark, I guess. It is, yes, it, it's, it's, it's Halloween season. Uh, much more interesting than anything New Japan has going, in my opinion, Dylan, is... What is going on with Katsuhiko Nakajima right now? He had his, not his last Noah match, but his last Kurokan Hall match for Pro Wrestling Noah. And I was surprised that the attendance in the end wasn't all that high. It was 1,280 fans. And the All Japan show, the day later where it turned up after the main event, did a bit better than the final Kurokan for Nakajima. What was your takeaway from that from that crowd? For the Noah crowd, I mean that's that's a big number for them. Like you know, if you look at this, would be probably in their top three all year at Korokan. I think the only one would be lower than is Nakajima and Kento, uh, actually, for their Korokan numbers, which are traditionally very bad at the end of the day. Um, and I think that it's just a sign of where they're at when it comes to Corquin and Nakajima. And no, I, you know, a big comment, you know, we're going to talk about him in the All Japan in this segment there. I saw multiple people, like, this was a, re- a regular thing I saw. Oh, Nakajima looked like a bigger star in this one segment than he did it at all in Noah. <laughs> you, you know, like, I saw that from so many people. Sure. And it's true, <laughs> to, to be honest. I mean, you know. Outside of that one moment with Kento in Noah, he is not a star in that company and has not been ever. Really. That's true. That's really true. And you know what? I just uh, looked it up. There is a show in March, a Noah show in March, that, that, that did better than the last Kurokan for Nakajima. And it was headlined by Amakusa versus I-69 for the Judah title. Big draw. <laughs> Big draw. Man, man, I miss Amakusa. Me too. But yeah, but great that's Oh yeah, that, that was really good. <laughs> I, I miss that brother a lot. And of but, course, uh, One Night Dream was was better. Of course, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, top three of the year. I think that's about what I would have expected. Uh, you know, and for them, it's good. But yeah, like on paper, one of your supposed biggest stars leaving should like sell out everything. Exactly. And be this, yeah. Like so, if if you measure it by the real standards, you're right. But by the Noah standards, I still think it was good for them. Yeah, and of course, Naomi Chimov, which is showed it better as, as well. So, top four, Good. yeah. Oh, yeah, top, okay, top number four of the year, yeah. then. But at least it's it's something, you know. If it had, if, if it had done less, <laughs> that that would have been worse. Yeah, but yeah. But, I mean, you're, you're right, ultimately. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, I think for them, their their baseline is so low. I mean, look at that. Look what we're talking about. You're looking at a handful of shows that have done over a 1,000 all, all mm. year in, in Cork. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's... That's bad. And they've really loaded up their roster. There's a lot of guys on this roster that uh, that they always bring in. And they, it's got to be one of the more expensive rosters in all Japan. Just, from, well, that... the, just from, the, from the baseline of how many people they have on the roster. And you know they dropped huge money with Teriyaki coming in. Yes. <laughs> teriyaki, how about that? But look at this roster up and down. It's all foreigners, practically. Mm-hmm. Like, they're flying these guys in that, that don't make any difference. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, okay, let's look at all of this roster right now mm-hmm. on this show. 
Well, this last show, anyway, the Corkin show. Okay, EO Dr. Wagner Jr., Jack Morris. Those, those are both in the semi main event. That's two. Alpha Wolf, Dragon Bane, Anthony Green, LJ Clearly. Cleary. Uh, so that's six people in two matches right now. Daga, that's seven. You've got Saxon Huxley, eight. Mm-hmm. Extreme Tiger, nine. Ninja Mac, Teriyaki, that's 11. Yep. And Stallion Rogers. So that's 12 people on yes. this roster. That's as many people almost as All Japan's full roster. Yes, yes, they had this roster presentation at the show. The other day. <laughs> it was like 12 people, yeah, yeah. And yeah. now you t- and not and not to mention they're hiring outsiders on, on other shows. You got Shuji Kondo in there, uh, coming in there. You've got Hideki was on the show. Murakami they made a big deal out of. Mm-hmm. So you're getting all of these outside dudes, foreigners. They have to fly in and their own base roster, which has a number of people. So yeah, just by just and their by their own the- base roster, which they always fail to make new stars out of. Well, none of these guys are stars at the end of the day, whether they're foreigners, whether they're outsiders, whether they're homegrown. It's like they're not stars, like whoever they are. And it's whoever, not yeah. saying that they don't have acts that are over. For example, like the GLG act, to a degree, is pretty over with the crowd. Yeah. yeah but that's to a degree. Uh, their most over act is gone now with X's. And I was really surprised there? how the crowd responded to Jake over Go in their singles match uh, on there. Uh, to me, the only guy that you can really point to is Keno. That Keno great. makes a difference, yes. Yeah. Like, he, to me, is their top star, and will likely get the title. I mean, we'll talk about it after the match happens. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, based on yes, what happens. But let's look at Keno, and Keno has been a star since his win in the Global League back in 2017. Then there was Kaito Kiyomiya, but after that, there was nobody that they've elevated to a level that you can really say that guy from their roster is a star that makes a difference. Well, there was Go. Like, but he was, he was there before, too. That's true, but he was never a star before the other times he was there. Um, and, it, and I mean, he had such a great run himself, <laughs> more than anything they particularly did, I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's nobody. I mean, they tried with Nakajima, and just it at just some point out. they tried, but at another point they threw him through the wolves. Exactly. I mean, they tried briefly and then sabotaged it at the end, and then that's about it. I mean, this year again, kind of like similar to New Japan with Sonata for Noah. This year has been all about establishing Jake as the champion. Yeah. Has that been successful? No, <laughs> like at the end of the day, but they're but like you said, that's all they have, though. That's like all they you know. have. Yeah. But uh, the more the more the title match uh, between Jake and Keno nears, the more I think that they need to switch the title. Yeah, I think they will. But I mean, even then, we kind of talked about it on the last episode. Uh, whoever wins, yeah. What's next? What's next? There's nobody else. <laughs> like these are your guys, like Keno and Jake. Uh, nobody else has been established or elevated at all this year. Uh, and like you said, you have to wonder about uh, the roster cost. The production values are, are really high for the company, mm-hmm. and that, that's great for them, but it does cost. And at the end of the day, I mean, they're owned by such a large company that it doesn't really matter, to, to be honest. I mean – they have this uh, idle horse game that makes them like a zillion dollars a, m- a month. On- <laughs> yes, that is that is true as well. But like you said, they have they have to have very high costs, and I really, I'm really unsure how this promotion is supposed to to make any money with all the costs that they have that you have to consider with all the foreign talent coming in. I mean. Of course, there's there's talent like let's look at for example L.J. Cleary. I don't think that he's any kind of expensive or teriyaki. For him, it's a great opportunity to be, to be in Japan. I don't think these guys are really expensive, but it's the number of people that they fly in for all their shows all the time. That's the expensive part of it. Just the flights themselves, yeah. like, will, will uh, uh, you know add up eventually. Like even mm-hmm. if they, these guys aren't like big stars coming in, they still have to come here you know, right. at the end of the day. Uh, and that's kind of an issue, but and if you're a company that that has to, that looks at their uh, income in the end of the year, if there's 
a product like Prosting, no, that just eats money. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would just say, ah, that doesn't matter. Do you feel like there's been growth this year? Like, let's z- zoom back to one year ago to now. One year right? ago. Yeah. No, I don't think there has been growth. Keno was the champion at that time. Or yeah. no, it was, it, was, it was Kaito that was the champion. He got the drink dumped on his head by Fujita at, <laughs> at this time last year. This time last year, Dylan, everything was focused on Keiji Muto's final run. Yep, that's right, and they don't have that this year. And we've said it right after the show. Right after the yep. show in February, we yep. said that Noah will be running to huge problems because they don't have that hook that they've been going for for the last six months to one year, uh, you can say. That's not been there. So I don't think that there has been growth. Let's see what happens on this Ken Owen Jake match. See if they set something up for the, the January 2nd show in yeah. Ariake. Uh, if, they, if they can do something like that to maybe get some buzz, get, keep, get people hyped, I think it has to be an outsider uh, if they want to have a big match. Um, yeah, we've said that, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's, just like we said on this show, there's just nobody next uh, at the end of the day. I mean, they, they even downsized from their biggest show, uh, from a big show in January. They've downsized from Budokan to Ariake. Yep, that's right. And, uh, yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. I, I don't have a lot of confidence in them right now, no. but I, like you said, Nakajima uh, leaving. It, and I want to say, just... I want to say this wasn't a bad show. I, I enjoyed the show. I watched. Uh, I usually don't watch many Noah shows, but I watched this from top to bottom, and I I enjoyed most of the matches. I really enjoyed the eight man tag with Alpha Wolf and Dragon Bane. I think they are really good. Uh, Kiyomiya and Roy Oiwa as a tag team is, is really cool, and they had a good match with the uh, good-looking guys there. The semi-main with Wagner, Kano, Jack Morris, and Lee was good as well. Main event, uh, I think, left left a lot to be desired, to be quite honest. I, 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 I enjoyed it for what it was. I enjoyed the parts with Nakajima and Masaki Damiya, but it really... <sighs> this was the final match for Nakajima and Kurken. Of course, he's going to have one more match, yes, but, yeah, they, they string together some uh, storylines from the past. Yes, they did. But it didn't really feel like this was the final final one, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, this was not a, a fiery match or anything that will be remembered, I, I would say. You know, in six months' time, I think this will all be forgotten. Yeah. Um, pretty much. If, if not even six days' time, <laughs> to be honest. I think by the time he does the other match, they'll <laughs> move on from, the, from this. Yeah. Uh, but... It could have been a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, coming up is Demolition in Fukuoka on the 28th. The next weekend, national title, Wagner, junior defense against Jack Morris. Nakajima's then final no match, him and Shiozaki against Mauro Fuji and Sugiura and heavyweight championship, as we said, Jake Lee against Keno. Gotta think that in the meantime, they announced more matches. Now, that's what I have right now in front of me on Poor Love. I'm checking... For uh, yeah, there'll be about ten or eleven matches by the yeah. by the. <laughs> <laughs> they have Monday Magic coming up, of course, on Monday, and then there's uh, the show on in Fukuoka. Let's see. They have Kojima as a mummy again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they have a bunch of matches announced. It's a really uh, oh, once again a long, long, long list of names. Do you want to go through all of it or just have the main matches? I don't know. It's just it's so much. Every single match now, huh? uh, but now I, I mean. What are the important matches? Uh, yeah, the important matches are the, ma- the matches that I mentioned. Uh, then there's the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title match, Dragon Bane and Alpha Wolf defended against Yohei and Tadasuke. Uh, we, have, we get another <laughs> another match of Hayata and Eita versus Daga and Yoshinari yes. Ogawa. And then we go to the multi-man matches. That's it. What do you think about them like locking Kaito out of the building and, and all of that? Huh? That was the finish of the match that they had. It was Leona and, and Ogawa and Ata, I think, and they locked Kaito oh, oh, in the building. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Leona? We didn't even mention him. I mean, that's a big star. His dad think. was. His dad once was. Yes, he brings him wherever he goes. I think Leona's not that bad. It's he's just, fine. Yeah, it's just he's in this a really terrible group, <laughs> unfortunately, right now. So, yeah, Oiwa and Kaito, they're doing their thing. Should be fun. Um, yeah. Noah. I mean, what a company. What a company. Yeah. Nakajima apparently is out of it. 
Uh, it's not apparently. He, he is. Good, good for him. Uh, in the end, uh, let, he... Let me ask one thing before we move on to that, because I have something kind of serious uh, that I want to talk about. How do you think they handled the news that came out about Okada and Yano? Terribly. Yeah, I, I, I wanted Terribly. to mention that, because yeah, I was... I, for, yeah. For context, uh, they were let go in June, and everybody was confused about why that happened. And um, yeah, it was April. They were officially let go in June. They had their last show in April. Okay. Yeah, that's the timeline, actually. That's, uh, they, they were the official news that they... I'm just looking at Cage Match. Let's see when we had the... Uh, yes, June 1st. June 1st was the official note that they got released from Pro Okay. Uh, but it was in April, you're right, that they had their final match with Noah. They were supposed to be on the... April 16 show in Sendai, but were taken off the card before that. So their final match was on April 9. So the the news that came out is that Kinya Okada and Yasu Takayano, they apparently molested a woman in Sendai. Uh, we don't know what the degree of that was. That's really not. It's not really important, but the news just yeah. doesn't, doesn't really tell what what the deg- degree was. Fact of the matter is, they are going to face charges because of sexual assault, and that's really terrible, and it's a terrible look for the company that they didn't take a stand against that, and that they that the news just came out f- through different news agencies and personally, no could have taken a step, but they did not they, did, they chose to just quietly let them go and uh, not take any measures to it, so I, I, I think it's terrible I agree with this and there was a lot of speculation when all this was going down, right? And yeah. I was really nervous, to be honest, when a lot of people were speculating because I kind of thought this was along the lines of what had happened. Mm. If you even go back and, like, there was times people, maybe on this show, maybe even on Dream Dragons or something, like, this might have gotten brought up. And I would try to pivot away from it really fast. Like, when mm-hmm, they would com- mm-hmm. compare it to, like, when... SBK and them got let go. Of, of DJ. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I really wanted to avoid that because this. I I just had a sinking feeling that, you know, when I asked about this, I poked around to try to figure out some stuff, right? It mm-hmm. no with people in the company, and it was like a government secret what had happened. Yeah. Like no, nobody would say anything. And to me, again, I didn't have any. Nobody said this. This was just my feeling when it happened. That, to me, signified that there was some kind of legal thing going on, like charges or something that was in dispute that nobody could talk about legally. And mm-hmm. obviously, I'm not Japanese. I don't know the Japanese law and how things work. But that was what I felt. And so now we get to this point. All these months later, you know, it came out. And that's one thing I will say. Maybe that is something. Like there was some kind of charges issues. Uh, if you go back, remember, like their last match – it was a surprise removal, and I think that's why a lot of people were kind of weirded out by it because Saito – remember, Akitashi Saito was literally in his pants. <laughs> like he he didn't have yeah. time. And yeah, to he me, wasn't supposed to wrestle. And to me, what that signifies is is that the company had no clue this happened in Sendai. Like you said, molesting, groping, wh- whatever it means. We don't know. It's bad. Mm. It's a totally foul, whatever happened. Uh, and they didn't know. So then they probably found out when the police came to the arena looking for the people in question, Okada and Yano, and they had to make a a move that nobody could understand or, you know, really have prepared for. And now we get to this point. Yeah. All these months later, I was talking to somebody on, uh, on Twitter, my friend Yoshiko, who lives in Japan, and she was basically very unhappy with how things had played out. Yeah. And I asked her about it because if you notice, Keno had made a video where he actually commented on this. Mm. Uh, and he basically said, this is a disgrace. Like, this gives a bad name to Noah and its wrestlers. And I'm very sorry. Uh, was more or less his statement. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, you can check out Metal Noah. He, he'll have the, the translation on Twitter. Uh, good friend. But we were basically saying that, and I agreed with what she said. Like, he's a very popular guy to the fans, like a very popular wrestler, figurehead, whatever. Um, and it basically, his YouTube is probably, it's not like Noah doesn't know what's going on his YouTube page. You know, they're, if not in charge of it directly, they're a very big part of his YouTube page. We know that. Why can't 
the vice president, someone like Amara Fuji, say, or somebody who's a part of the company in a real sense. Like That shouldn't be Keno's job to speak on it. It should be the company's job to, as you said, take a stand, comment yeah, on it. Take a stand, and, and there's yeah. there's more to it. There's this there's an article on Tokyo Sports as well, where in, in the article it is put into a similar perspective as the uh, hit and run that Kitaro Kanemura did oh, yeah, a couple of is. weeks ago as well. And there's two perspectives here. One industry source is, is cited here. Don't the organizations also have accountability? And that's what you said. They, they should come out there and say, yes, okay, we are to be held accountable for what our wrestlers do and we will, we will do everything in our power that this kind of uh, assault will never happen again. That's what they should do. Instead, there is another source they set the source as a wrestler from another organization. The wrestler from the other organization says, this will once again tarnish the image of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. How long will the negative chain last? So they are more, they're more uh, looking, at, looking at what the outcome for the scene will be instead of considering, okay, yeah, we should be held accountable for what our wrestlers do. That's the wrong way to approach it. Oh, I completely agree. And and I do want to say for the record, I'm not blaming Noah at all for what they did. Uh, you know, that's not accurate. Uh, you know, they are the ones that made these decisions, uh, this horrible decision to, to do this. Sure. Um, but what you said is right. Like, they they are your employees. They are your wrestlers. You owe it. And this is a place where you need to take a stand and make sure that the fans know that there's safety. There's precautions so that this doesn't happen at one of your shows, let alone to any of your or by any of your wrestlers, even outside of, of the arena. I completely agree with what you said. There's more to it too, not only in Pro Wrestling Noah. Daiki Shimomura from Pro Wrestling Batana was, that up as well. yeah, was yeah. suspended for one year for they didn't outright say what he did either. They just said he that it was about misconduct in private life for whatever that means. Then there is uh, Yoji Otani still running around in the indie scene in Japan, winning titles left and right. So our c- accountability is not there. It's really tough when you get to the, the indie level, you know, these smaller companies. Uh, just because they're so low on the totem pole, they're going to escape spotlight and, and things like that. That's true. Um, yes. You know, and, and, and honestly, if Otani wins titles... Who cares? Like, I mean, it doesn't matter in the grand, in the grand. No, scheme, in the grand scheme, it doesn't. It doesn't matter, yeah. of course. But it's like he, he never really like. I don't know. I, it's it's a tough topic, you know. It's uh, it's a really no, tough I, topic. And I mean, his was very, was was vile. Like, I mean, yeah, they, you know, like his his and like in in I, an ideal world, he would be in jail. Like, you know, for, for what he did. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And he didn't, that's, that's what I was about to say, but yeah. I wasn't re- completely sure. But, but he didn't really face any real consequences, right? Absolutely. And then, like, that's a shame that that happened. And again, I feel I'm always hesitant to touch on this kind of topic because yeah. the Japanese law is so, you know, I don't have a full understanding of it uh, overall, you know, so I don't want to talk like I know what goes for on. For me, it's when... always tough to talk about topics like that because English is my first language, you know, and I really <laughs> like. Try, try to to uh, right? yeah yeah it's it's really really tough for me to uh, like find the right words to to you so I hope hopefully yeah. I, I I did but it's it's no, really... no, it, obviously these are horrible subjects you know this is not what we are experts in or anything like that or even you know we don't know the legal proceedings or or anything like that but there is a such thing as justice that didn't get fulfilled in this situation for an Otani for sure uh, again like I said he's gonna escape the radar. He's not going to do anything in wrestling that anybody cares about outside of a very small number of fans. And that's about all we could take solace in, ultimately. He's never going to be on a bigger show. Um, with these guys, Okada and Yano, and you hesitate to think of what actually happened to make it this way because you, you may say, oh, mm-hmm. like a dark version may be it must have been something really heinous that they did take steps it shouldn't take something heinous for you to to protect your fans your women uh you know out there to protect female fans and women out there who are innocent that shouldn't be violated by any people but obviously you know again culturally in japan there's a lot there when it comes to you know like you know women not being safe from yeah. 
yep. peepers and perverts and weird people out there, you know. Uh, so it's a very tough thing ultimately. But it does seem like in this case, I don't know what happened um, with Daiki. Uh, you know, Otani, we, we talked about that already. Like he's a nobody and a loser. Mm. and he sucks. Ultimately, yes, yes. Yeah. But well, the question I, about uh, Okada and Yano uh, in the articles, they are talked about as former professional wrestlers of Noah or former professional wrestlers even. Do you think that they'll be back? Not on Noah, but in wrestling in general. It seems like in this case there will be justice, and that's kind of what I was I was getting to. Like it seems so. like they're they're going to do something for it, and, and I completely agree. It seems like at the very least, legally, something will happen, and they have consequences. Again, unfortunately for Otani, like you said, you were completely correct. So yeah. he didn't have any. But it looks like in this case they will, and hopefully, again, I have no inside knowledge to even say this. And again, I, I'm kind of uncomfortable even talking about it. But yeah. uh, I I hope that this is a sign of like a positive change in terms of justice and protecting people in general, like not just even wrestling fans. It just goes beyond that, obviously. Uh, there's plenty of cases, again, where uh, I get to various degrees of severity. You know, Tani, to me, seemed like very ex extremely high level to me. But then you have stuff like, Taiz you know, Taizawa and, and um, uh, Takazawa, rather, and, and uh, 2AW. 2AW, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you've got Hiroshi Hase, even a politician. He had his, his groping. Correct. Correct. You know, and, you know, it's just one of the things I can't really fully wrap my head around some of this stuff because – Like if this were an Amer like let's say somebody in AEW did something like this, mm -hmm. they would be gone. Like that that would be the end of it. Uh, you know they wouldn't even be in the indies in, in all likelihood. They would have to go to such a small. Uh, I, I don't know about that. You know, re wrestling locker rooms. We've had enough stories about wrestling locker rooms that I I'm not certain that they wouldn't be back in in uh, some kind of locker room. Well, yeah, they, they would, would go some somewhere. Outlaw yeah, yeah. Groups. That's what where they would wrestle, of course. But yeah, like I, you know, I agree that in the in the grand scheme, it seems like wrestling has gotten better over time. Well, you, you know, the people who really did some vile stuff. I mean, they're they're gone. I mean, no nobody can hire David Starr or Joe or Joey Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, if you look at shoes, I mean, there's all kinds of people you can point at, but in terms of like the grand scheme, again. Uh, that's at least some progress, and hopefully in a smaller, you know, like I said, like you said, ultimately, if you want to be in wrestling, you will find some small outlaw, you know, like, like I said, Otani, the places he's wrestling, you have nobodies in them, and like, with all due respect uh, to the fans of those places, it doesn't matter, like, if they all disappeared tomorrow from wrestling, it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever, and I think that, to me, is the best I can hope for, you know, I... Even somebody like Travis Banks and IWRG, I mean, that's such a small scenario uh, to where, like, people getting outraged about it is the only attention they ever get from anybody uh, overall. And that's why I try to like, just not even give those places my even – you know, I've never seen a show with Joji Otani on it uh, since, all of, you know, since all of that happened. Yeah, me neither. And I'm not going to. <laughs> so so and I, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. So that that's all I could do as a fan. Is just not associated with people like that, and like Okada and Yano. I don't think they'll ever be back. Uh, you know, I, I think whatever legal charges has will make them pretty much untouchable. Yeah. Will they come to some again? Like kind of like what we were saying before. Like, will they be in some small outlaw show that doesn't matter? Maybe, but I mean, why? Like at, at that point, why they were already in Noah? Why would they go to some dump to wrestle? That's right. Yes, so um, transitioning back from from that topic to Katsuka Nakajima. Nakajima appeared in All Japan Pro Wrestling after Yuma Aoyagi defeated Kento Miyahara, and we've on the last show discussed where they, that would be leading, where Yuma's title run could be leading. Uh, now that he has beaten Kento Miyahara, Right after the match, I figured, okay, yeah, that's that's big for him. Uh, the match itself, he for the first time in the matches that they had with one another, it's it was that Aoyagi was the dominant factor in the match. He also played a bit of a heel role, uh, going um, back to uh, similar stuff that he did in the uh, Saito Brothers tag team title match on October 10. Which, by the way, this is a great 
tag team match. You really, really should go out of your way to see Kento Miyahara and Yuma Oyagi versus Rey and Jun Saito in the Saito Brothers' hometown. The crowd is so hot, boiling hot crowd for the hometown guys. And Aoyagi healed it up so great in that match that he, at one point, he literally started eating a Saito Brothers banner. And he did something similar here with uh, the, the uh, Miyahara towels at ringside. He started biting the towel and whipping the towel on his ass, throwing it back to, to the woman in the first row. Uh, of course, not his bare ass, his, his, his pants, of course, were there. Uh, but Ariagi was a great dominant force in this match, uh, which <clears throat> to the point that Nakajima, uh, to the point that uh, Miyahara had to make a comeback. And it felt like, yeah, maybe this comeback would be leading to uh, uh, Miyahara winning a title, but They had so many great near falls in the match, especially the near fall for the shutdown suplex that uh, Yuma Aoyagi kicked out of at 2.999. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a great match at first. Dylan, what's your opinion on the match? Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> like, I, I really enjoyed that match a lot. Kento and, and Yuma, I kind of said this on Twitter before, one of the, the best parts, but it's also kind of like, The struggle with them is that they're so great as a team that it's a shame they're also so great as a single stars yeah. uh, because, you know, you could have this legendary run as a tag team uh, or a legendary run as a singles, either one uh, overall. And, and you see them as a team here and you see how great they were. They really did such a wonderful job also tapping into that seemingly – inherent ace quality that they both have of being able to go more heelish uh, at will in a match. As we saw it here against the Saito brothers here who came across like big stars uh, and they, they felt like they were super over. Uh, the match was so good. Uh, like just a really great, like you, like, the thing is a lot of people will say, Oh, this is a long match and all of that. But they worked it so well and so brilliantly yes. that there was no doubt that the fans were with it every minute of this match. How crazy is that when you look at the Saito brothers? It and, didn't feel and, like a 37-minute match. Exactly. And, I mean, the wrestling was awesome. Uh, you know, great fire from everybody. Like, all four of them, ultimately, uh, they used every bit uh, that they could. Smoke and mirrors, brawling everywhere, <laughs> like in, in the arena and the crowd and everything else. And uh, it came in with a huge win at the end uh, for the Saito brothers. Like, just a, a great, great match with a lot of hard work. The crowd added so much to it. That's a, a thing I really like about this show, too. Uh, both shows, actually, with All Japan and just All Japan in general. Yep. I you compare them to Noah. Their crowds are so good, like oh, yeah. all, all Japan. Like, they, they are hot. They believe in these this roster that they've assembled and a lot of the great guys they have here. And the crowd makes them seem like even bigger stars than they are. One of the are. better decisions they've made this year is taking Triple Crown matches outside of Tokyo. They've done that numerous times this year. One time, I think, in early, in February. I think it was the Nagata and Aoyagi match, wasn't it? Or was it... No, the, uh, in February was uh, the title change to Nagata. But they definitely had a Triple Crown match outside... Um, I, I, um, it was... Miyahara and Aoyagi for the Triple Crown, I think. Uh, let's let's see and verify that. I think in Kento's final, in Kento's last run, yeah, it was in Hachioji. Uh, oh, and yeah, it was in February. It was in February right before Nagata beat Miyahara for the title. And they had a crowd of 1,398 people. Now they went to the Saito Brothers' hometown for the World Tag Team title match, and they drew around 1,700 Uh, of course, here, Beck and Kurken, one of their better draws of the year with 1,340. Uh, only the February show where Nagata won the title and Shingo Takagi was on the card, did better for All Japan. And now they are going to take a triple crown match to Sapporo as well on November 5. Yuma Oyagi will defend the title against the name yet to be announced. I guess I, I can see it being Jung Saito because Saito beat Aoyagi uh, in that tag team title match. He pinned him. So that would be a title match for Sapporo. But yeah, much like you said, they are very successful with their crowds. And the people that do show up are passionate about the product. Yes. Like everywhere they go, you've got a lot of excited, happy, and hungry fans. Uh, and that's, they make their shows feel bigger than they are. And, and I totally agree with your point. 
even in Yuma's reign, that so far they've continued that tradition. They've done a lot of great things. I mean, they had their biggest house at, at Shimane uh, mm-hmm. earlier this year. The match with him and, and Hokuto, uh, the title match. Oh yeah, right. Um, yeah, it's a Suwama was the Osaka show they had there too. So you you've got a lot of cool stuff going on right now with not just the wrestling in the ring, but how the company is being run. I think they're doing a fantastic job. They are really doing a great job. And now, after the match, like I said, I was thinking, okay, yeah, now Aoyagi has beaten Keto Miyahara. And on our last show, we said, yeah, what's he going to do after that? And right after the match ended and Miyahara got out of the ring, Katsuhiko Nakajima appeared. I, I was talking to Mark Pickering, who was at the show, and he was leaving after uh, Aoyagi won. He kind of expected uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima to appear, but he didn't think it was going to be after uh, uh, Kento had lost. So he left, but he bumped into Nakajima going to the ring, so he rushed back in. And it was a great reaction from the crowd. They really gasped that Nakajima was just standing there. He had flowers, obviously, for the situation that Kento Miyahara would beat. Yuma Aoyagi for the title and be champion and congratulate uh, Miyahara on winning the title and challenge him, probably. But he threw the uh, the bouquet in his face and left him there. And that got me thinking, Dylan, how that will affect Yuma Aoyagi, because Yuma Aoyagi has to be pissed that his big moment got taken away by Katsuyu Nakajima. Absolutely. Uh, I, th- I thought it was a great angle, uh, honestly. These two... Obviously, this is a match everyone's going to be excited about, Kento and Nakajima. I was so happy that Yuma retained the title. Yeah. In a fantastic match, uh, for for the record. And and I just, I loved everything about the match itself. Probably the best All Japan match this year, in my opinion, and and one of their better matches together, and a great rivalry. Uh, And I thought that they did great stuff there. Um, And then to have Nakajima come out, I mean, that was just the cherry on top of everything. Uh, I love the way you said it, like, oh, he was there to congratulate him, and then he lost, and then he was pissed because of it. <laughs> just great stuff there. Uh, like, I, I love that. And like you said, that opens up, like you said, a great point on your part. What a great threat it could lead to between Nakajima and Yuma now, exactly. and build up to a, to a major match. Like, you've got multiple major matches coming out of this. <sighs> yeah. And, uh, you, you love seeing it again. Uh, talking about how great of a star, like compare how Nakajima came across here to that Noah match. <laughs> yeah, I, I, one point I want to make, wanted to make on the Noah show uh, as well is that after the main event, Katsuhiko Nakajima said, "Keep your eyes on me," <laughs> and he was right. Everybody's eyes was on him. The very next day, he stepped into Kirk and again. And yeah, on our last show, we said that probably all Japan Pro Wrestling can't be a permanent home for Nakajima. They don't have the money. They don't run often enough. But for a run, this seems perfect right now. Yeah. Because I really think that Aoyagi and Nakajima could be the main event for the December 31st show in Yogi. Mm-hmm. And from there, I, I guess that Nakajima wins the title. There was everybody's opinion yesterday when we talked about it on Twitter that uh, Nakajima wins the title from Yuma Aoyagi. Kento Miyahara wins the champion carnival. Kento Miyahara wins back the belt. That could be a realistic scenario for the next six to eight months. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Uh, like Overall, I think that these guys have a great plan coming forward. Um, it seems like you've got a lot of great things with both Nakajima against both of these opponents as well. Uh, like you said, it makes perfect sense, the storyline you laid out, him winning the title, Kento getting revenge on him again uh, later on down the line. It makes sense politically. It gives everybody something they want. It gives us hot matches and great angles. Uh, I just love everything about what they're doing right now, and that was just a fantastic main event uh, overall. Like, and Not just the main event itself, but just a setup to the future going forward. Mm. When you would think a lot of to a lot of people that are – you know, this time of year are usually, hey, the tag league's coming up. It's not that great. It's not that special. But right now, All Japan feels super hot and great, and they're doing uh, so many cool things. Yeah, they have lots of good stuff uh, lined up, especially the positioning 
of the Junin Ray Saito versus Ryokyo Honda and Yuma Anzai match uh, was really telling because they had that right before the Triple Crown match. So you can see that these four guys, they are wrestlers that they are looking for for a bigger push next year. The Saitos once again won this match. I think this time it was Jun, or was it Ray getting the pinfall? Um, let's see. Oh, it was Ray. Ray pinned Anzai following uh, Doomsday Device. But Jun still has the pinfall victory over Yuma Oyagi match, like I said. Uh, these four are, when we talked about upside in Pro Wrestling Noah, there is, there really is upside in All Japan Pro Wrestling and in contrast to Noah, All Japan really has bet on their own talent and they've made not only one talent work this year, but they've made several talents work and uh, have established them as stars, including the Saito brothers, including Honda, Anzai, Atsuki Aoyagi, Rising Hayato, specifically in the junior division. They are so good at establishing their own talent. And much like you said, the crowds are hot. The All Japan Shinkiba crowd is always one of the hottest crowds in entire Japan. And to your point, it makes the shows in Shinkiba feel much bigger than they, <laughs> and they really are. This is this tiny place where 200 to 300 people fit in. And it's just, it seems like this big arena with this loud crowd. Uh, we've said it on the last show. Hideki Zuki coming and makes an immediate difference. Uh, he's in a tag team with Zuwama now, touching on the real world tag league later. Dan Tamura, I thought on this show, Dan Tamura looked so good with Shinya Aoki. This is a total contrast to what Great does with their great MMA stuff, where their guys look like idiots against these MMA wrestlers. They had Shinya Aoki come in and have a competitive 15-minute match with Dan Tamura. That put him over very strong. So, up and down this roster, there is hooks that you can align yourself with as a fan. And that's what makes All Japan really good in this second half of the year. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that was a really good match. Dan uh, has shown great growth. Uh, you know, even back to last year, they had him and Sato win the All Asia titles. Um, and he's continued to grow as on his own now as we head into the junior tournament and, and the tag league coming up. He's a guy you look at that He's not one of their top stars or big projects or anything like that, but he still continues to grow and give you something to sink your teeth into as a fan. And I think they've done a great job uh, with him. And, and just up and down the roster, I thought that was a great use of Aoki. Uh, they've had fruitful relationships w- when it comes to DDT. Glate, they, they've had they've used that as well to their advantage. Saito Brothers are still the, uh, the G-Infinity champions oh, yeah. uh, as well. They carry Glate. that around, right. Yeah, let's let's not forget that as well. Double champions <laughs> yes. right now. Uh, bringing freelancers like Hideki coming in. Uh, you know, they, they've done a lot of great things. They're a really cool company to watch right now, and I think they're the hottest they've been um, in a long time. Honestly, I think they're doing a lot of great things, and I look forward to see where they're going in general. I think there's a lot of great things to look forward to in multiple divisions. Yeah. Do you also think that uh, Yuma Aoyagi versus Jun Saito will be the match for support? Sure. I, I think that's fine. Um, it's interesting to have a single Saito brother for a title. That would be yep. like a big test for them. Uh, they did all right at the Champion Carnival, though, when they were I singles mean, guys. Ray Saito was announced for the Deacon Grand Prix as well today, so they uh, yeah, yeah. have singles matches. Yeah, Yeah. so with that said, it makes perfect sense, like what you and said. It, <laughs> the Saito brothers act in general. It's such a perfect act for a company like All Japan Pro Wrestling. These guys are definitely not the most talented wrestlers. But they make their shtick work more and more. With every match, they get more confident and what they do looks better in each match. They're no technical wizards and they shouldn't be because they are monsters. At the same time, they I don't think they are interesting for New Japan to snitch them away. They are just not their kind of wrestlers that they True. would bring in. So for a company like All Japan, having two tall guys like these two and establishing them as stars is really crucial for their growth because when we look, for example, at Yuma Anzai, that could be someone that another company, that a bigger company, gets away from them. For example, New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
And I don't sense that danger with the Sato brothers. So positioning them strongly in the next coming months and years will be a cornerstone for, for their growth and next, uh, next foreseeable future. Absolutely. I think they've done a great job. They've really turned it around from the voodoo murders uh, stuff they were doing a year ago. They've toned it down considerably, so that's really yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I always liked them when they were young lions. I, <laughs> I thought they had something unique with the sumo stuff. Uh, they obviously flipped that around with the, the new stuff here, but I think they've really found their way uh, this year as time has gone along. And like you said, they've toned down the bad stuff. And uh, yeah, they're a totally good act at people that you could look at. You, know, you could say that about everybody. Outside of like, you know, an Anzai, obviously New Japan would love to, to have. Everybody knows that. But like these guys here, they formulated a crew that really feels like this company has its own identity in, yeah. in multiple ways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you also did a poll on our Twitter, Dylan. Yeah. About the uh, the title situation or the Nakajima situation, more I want to say. Uh, so your question was, how much do you think Katsumiko Nakajima will work in All Japan after his debut? Uh, the majority of voters came down to Kento match and short run. So that's mostly what we thought as well. And I list long run as at least one year plus. Yeah. So that, within a year, he will be in, in New Japan. So with, by October 2024... He will be gone from all Japan and wherever he goes next. Yeah, and we've compared it to Zanada on our last show, and I thought that was a really good comparison because that that could be exactly what Nakajima is doing right now, having fun as a freelancer for a couple of months, for maybe even up to a year, and then once again uh, signing for another company. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes perfect sense, especially with something like this, where you have a, a clear, tried and true storyline. That will be successful. Like it's been proven that the him versus Kento was a very successful match. Correct. Uh, and the fans will be very interested logically in the follow up to that. So uh, I think it makes perfect sense for him to be here. I agree with the fans. Uh, honestly, I think that that's exa exactly how I'd play it. And what you said makes a lot of sense too. It, have him have a run with the title, make him seem like a big deal and it all lead to Kento And getting the win back in the end. And I think that helps everybody. That makes uh, Kento gets a big win over his eternal rival. Nakajima seems like a bigger star. The company gets big shows out of it. You can really build to a big show next year based around that. And then he can move on to, to wherever he wants to go next. Uh, so I think it makes perfect sense. I agree with the listeners on that one. So let's look at the Real World Tag League starting on November 12th, running through December 6th. We've I have to... one thing I want oh, to say sorry. real quick before that about Nakajima. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think of the Noah and All Japan relationship now that Nakajima's gone to All Japan? Because if you notice, it's not existed <laughs> recently. That would be my answer, yeah. Yeah, and... I think that's interesting timing uh, of all of this. Uh, obviously, we had the big all-together uh, show in June that a lot went around, but it seems like that all fizzled out quickly yeah. <laughs> around the same time th this happened. I think it's interesting, and I, I wouldn't expect too much going on between them in the near future, to say, to say the least. Yeah, one of your talking points this year has been that Kento Miyahara could be someone going to Noah. I don't think that's Not happening. anymore. No. <laughs> well, no, his whole purpose at Noah would have been to fight Nakajima. Exactly. It, yeah. And he he did. And then, they, then that that's was that was the end of that, uh, you know, like the Noah one, and you would have thought that they would have some kind of follow up plan. Nope. Exactly. No. Yeah. <laughs> Freezing cold relationship right now. I gotta think. Yeah, absolutely. So the Real World Tag League, November until uh, December six. World Tag Team Champions, the Saito Brothers, are of course in. The former Tag Team Champions, Yuma Oyagi and Kento Miyahara, return as a tag team. Very interesting here. Ryukyu Honda and Yuma Anzai, they make a great tag team. Zuwama and Hideko Suzuki, that's going to be very interesting as well, how they get along. Can they coexist? Two guys that can coexist are Shuji Ishikawa and Ren Ayabe. It's interesting that uh, Ayabe was in a match that was listed All Japan versus DDT, so I really expect him to be the next signing in early January. Okay. Yukio Sakaguchi and Hideki Okatani coming from DDT. Very cool stuff there, as well as the team from Great, Hayato Tamura and Galeno de Mal. Tamura, one of the better wrestlers, definitely in Great. 
Then we have uh, Jiro Kuroshio is back. But he's not Jiro. He is Japan Tokyo Kuroshio. And he teams with former Wrestle One mate Seiko Tachibana. The foreign attack team of Cyrus and Ryan Davidson. Ryan Davidson is a wrestler that um, is wrestling for Booker T's reality of wrestling promotion. But other than that, I don't think that he's ever done anything on the higher indie level. I'm looking at his career. And um, mostly the matches that he did was for ROW, other organizations he's wrestled for is Hurricane Pro, Lions Pride Spirit, Wrestle Rave, so small or indie promotions. Yeah, much like Cyrus, actually. So um, he has been in DDT uh, with the Renegades angle, too, a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, that was. And we got a tag team that is, uh, yeah, it's a mystery tag team, X and XX. What do you think about the roster? I think it's a pretty interesting league they've set up. I'm really interested to see what Suwama and Hideki do, like you said. Yeah. That seems like, you know, a very random uh, teaming on paper. Uh, you I get would, have stuff... loved, would have loved Hideki and Anzai more, to be quite honest. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they wanted to pair Honda and Anzai up for a little bit of a run here. Yeah. But I agree. Like, as a fan, yeah, Hideki and Anzai would have been my pick for sure. But I like Honda and Anzai too. I think that would be a, uh, that'll be a fine team. Uh, they might even be one of the favorites to win, to be honest. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, Looking at this li- lineup here, I think they could be the favorites. I think uh, Eruption coming in, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, like Those guys are going to have good chemistry with the, uh, everybody. The Glate team, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how Galeno gets over with the All Japan crowd, which we expect that he will <laughs> very, very greatly. Man, I, I, he's a big guy, and All Japan is a promotion where big guys are really loved. So I, I don't think the he'll be the he'll be in any trouble getting over. Exactly, and he'll be a lot of fun too. Um, y- y- Davidson gets a shot here again. Uh, hopefully, hoping the best for him that he comes in, you know, does some big things, a new talent. Uh, I don't really have any expectations or knowledge of his talents, but I, I hope that he gets over and, and has a great run there. I hope for the best for everybody involved. The the down part is Jiro coming back, of course. Uh, long-time <laughs> Eastern Lariat listeners will know that uh, I was not a huge fan of his when he was here the first Finally, time. Dylan, Zuwama can get his win back. Yeah, yes, that's right. After the 2020 <laughs> Champion Carnival <laughs> there uh, that he was in. But hey, listen, I'm not going to judge anybody. He's not my favorite wrestler at all, and him and Hanabata are probably going to be a terrible team in all, in all likelihood in, the, in this tournament, but uh, it's – hopefully they can add a different flavor to yeah. the tournament. You, you know, again, I'm not hyped for it at all. I don't like him by any stretch of the imagination, but listen, Wrestle 1 will continue to live on, and we will never be able to, to, to get away from it, unfortunately. Who do you think the mystery team will be? That's interesting. <laughs> not a Noah team. Probably not. Axis. Would, it, would it be another foreigner team? That's the question. What I don't make sense. Right here? Yeah. Could it be Who Nakajima? Nakajima go? Like I said, Axis. Ah. Well, well, go would have to <laughs> resign from Brooklyn like Noah first, I guess. Who's missing that Nakajima could tag with? Mm. Rio in a way. Uh, Hokoto Omori. That's true. And, you know, they built up him and um, Suzuki as a tag team uh, throughout the year, and they are, are mysteriously absent. Mm-hmm. So maybe if Suzuki's doing something in New Japan <laughs> that he's needed for, you could just switch. Like Nakajima take Omori. I think they could actually work kind of well together as yeah. a team in my head, uh, just ideally. Uh, so I, I love that idea, actually. Like, give Omori something to do. I don't see them working. Could it be a New Japan team? Could it could be a New Japan team? Why not? Ten Cozy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? Why the hell, why the hell not? Yeah, it's really, it's, it makes this even in, more interesting, right? I think this is a great roster of tag teams. The talent is very deep here. Hideki Zuki is someone that will be able to, to string a lot together. Yuma Anzai gets more 
opportunity to shine with Ryoku Honda on his side. Hideki Okatani coming in will provide lots of cool matches with the young talent on the roster as well. Galeno de Mal, big dude, big lucha dude, will will be very different from anybody else as well. So I, I really like this lineup. A lot of good young talent too. You get Honda and Anzai together, Ren Ayabe, yeah. uh, Hayato Tamura. I love that guy a lot. Uh, even team with, with Galeno. Uh, Davidson, new fresh scar. Okatani, mm-hmm. gonna get a chance to be very hungry. You're getting some young talent in there. Uh, they'll be inspired to not make this a slog. And I also think that it's good that it's not, you know, with 10 teams, it's not like it's gonna be a crazy amount of, of matches. Uh, you know, they're kind of getting the main guys in there. And we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I think that Honda and Anzai, when I look at the teams, they are probably the favorite. I could see the Suwama and Hideki team also, if they wanted to move on from them. Them versus the Saito brothers seems like a very legitimate possibility sure. for a tag title match. Yeah. And we have to see who the mystery team is as well, because they, they could be the, the group that wins as well. They could we'll be the big, big X factor. <laughs> <laughs> the double X factor. Yeah. But it's yes. a good tournament on paper. I like it. Yes. Yeah, me too. All right. Uh, over to DDT. They had a show. Today, in Kirkenhall, uh, a show with one title match only, and they drew a crowd of 800 flat. That's what they announced. That's okay for them. That's good for them <laughs> this year, <laughs> gotta say. Main, main event was a very good tag team match. Chris Brooks and Harashima defeated Yuki Ueno and Mao. Also, they did the angle with Hiromu Takashi winning the Ironman Heavy Metal title that I alluded to earlier. And um, they also uh, had Hirata Katsuki Hirata defeats Masashi Takeda, uh, Ta- Takeshi Masada, I'm sorry, Takashi Masada, <laughs> um, in a match for the Extreme Title and Iron Man Heavy Metal Title in a Let's Enjoy Everyone Will Have a Great Time death match, where, uh, at, at one point they brought out a Jenga tower, so it, it was, it was, uh, DDT comedy throughout the entire match. It was, it was a fun match. What about Overall, that was cradle? Excuse me? I said, what about the rolling cradle that he did to himself? <laughs> yes, that was fun too. No, it was, it was, it was, it was fun stuff here. The most interesting match, in my opinion, was the Saki Akai special tag match with Yuki Yosakaguchi and Hideki Okatani against Saki Akai and Shihiro Hashimoto. It was the first time that actually Saki faced their, their group and Yuki Yosakaguchi looked very conflicted all the time when he had to uh, kick Sakiyaka in the face in this match. Uh, he eventually pinned her with the Kami no Hisa, the right knee of God. Very tearful after our month of the match uh, with Saki retiring in November. So that was cool. Um, Mikami in the opener against Katsuma Sumi was cool too. I really enjoyed seeing him again. And uh, yeah, overall, it's, it was an enjoyable show, but nothing you really need to go on. You wait to see, in my opinion. Uh, they announced the roster for the D King Grand Prix. Pre Dylan, you have it in front of you. That's right. In block A, this features two blocks, obviously. This is the traditional tournament format. Block A has Yuki Ueno, Tetsuya Endo, Kazusada Higuchi, Hiroshima, Daisuke Sasaki, and Yuki Ino here. Block B has Chris Brooks, the champ, representing Mao, Kanon, Yuki Onaya, Kazuki Hirata, and Rei Saito. Uh, B block with the championships. A block, you, you get a lot of different people in. And, yeah. I really like A block. You've got Ueno, Endo, Higuchi... And Hiroshima. Yeah. Yuki Ino, coming back from yeah. the uh, pheromones angle, I'm really interest, interested to see where he fits in with the roster. I remember that before they started pheromones, I was hopeful that he would get a singles role because I thought he had potential. Mm-hmm. We'll see where he stands right now. He's one of the X factors in this block, I think. Daisuke Sasaki, I really don't have any time for, but all of the <laughs> others in this block really are looking good. And um, B block, Ray Saito, obviously, coming into DDT. It's, it, there's a question mark on how he performs with all the guys here. 
Canon really hasn't been good this year. So, yeah. There can be good matches in this block, definitely, with Yukio Naya, Chris Brooks, and Mao in, and Katsuki Hirata as well, but there, there could also be trade wrecks with, like, with Canon. I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, each block, I mean, like, Canon and Daisuke Sasaki are dreadful pro wrestlers. And, uh, like, I, I don't want to ever watch them. Uh, that tag title match they had uh, yeah. was, like, one of the worst matches of the year uh, that we saw. And even with the title change, it still sucked, <laughs> unfortunately, away from damnation. Um, the A block, you got Ueno, Higuchi, and Hiroshima. Those are three great A talents that you want to see. And I agree with your line of thinking on Eno that this is his chance to really step up. Uh, B block is a very mixed bag. Hirata has been excellent in everything he's done. That's not going to be like great wrestling, but it, it'll be more just fun stuff in every way, I think. If they yeah. wanted to let him wrestle seriously, I think he would do a great job at it, though. Uh, I always say that. I would love to see him have like a, a normal run, at least against like a Brooks. Uh, but yeah, otherwise to me, like Hirata will be fun. Brooks is probably going to have to carry the wrestling up and down. I'm not really enamored with any of the others. And, and Ray Saito, it's interesting. It's very random uh, in some ways. It's like of all people, you you pick a tag team specialist. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, I mean, again, I, I'm fine with it. It's not like I, I hate this or anything like that. I just, I think, wow, what you couldn't have picked a singles guy for, for yeah. the singles tournament. <laughs> uh, that's what I would have done. But, well, you know, who am I to doubt DDT here? But, yeah, B Block is going to be, it's going to re- hinge on the shoulders of Brooks here, who's had a good title reign so far with Iri and Saki Akai. You hope that him and Ueno can do something big uh, before then. So that's three great matches, uh, if you can. Um, the rest, yeah, I mean, it's all right. Like I said, to me, when you look at the winner, I don't see anybody I'm super excited about, I do have to admit, to be honest. When I, when I look at this lineup, who would you say is the favorite to win? Um, I think it would be someone from A Block. Ueno won last year. Ueno won... I could also be Yukio Naya from Big Block. They kind of built him up a little bit earlier yeah. in the year. Yeah. And they, much like I said, they haven't really done a lot with him since his return. So that could be a signal that uh, in the tournament they have something for him. I think the winner will be decided between Endo, Higuchi, Mao, and Naya. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. I think Mao could get a chance to step up. Uh, that seems like the kind of guy Brooks would want to have a match with. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, that may be something if they if they take his opinion into consideration, that might be something that you would think of. Or not even just his opinion, just him as a wrestler. They might take a stylistic approach to it. And Mao is one of their young guys. They've been kind of having bubble under for years now. So if they wanted to have him get a big moment... That would also lead into, you know, Shunma's injured right now. Maybe that's something you could look at. To, that's like thread you could point to when Shunma comes back from injury. Mao getting a title shot and a tournament win. That could add some stakes to their team. Maybe have a rivalry split off from that. I, I, yeah, I think I'll go with Mao winning. Mao here. makes Mao makes a lot of sense, yes. Yeah. Before that, before the tournament starts, that starts on uh, November 26th and... The final will be on January 3rd, 2024, in the new year. Uh, before that, we have, of course, Ultimate Party 2023 coming up. And they added one more match. Uh, <laughs> Kuroshio, whatever his name is, Japan, <laughs> Tokyo Kuroshio, he also made an appearance on the, the DDT show and he challenged uh, Takeshi Masada to a singles match in Sumo Hall. Um, to a big pop of the DDT audience. I remember that we talked about him in DDT and it didn't really work out. His line of comedy in DDT always felt weird, in my opinion. Um, yep. Yeah, let's see what, what the second, what the second uh, try here is then. Well, well that was Jiro Ikemen K- Kuroshio. Sure. This is now Kuroshio Tokyo <laughs> Japan. Yeah, this is a long card. Uh, they have a tag <laughs> rumble. They have a tag rumble starting it all off. Canon and MJ Paul, Naoki Doi, Katsumasumi, Yusuke Kara, Yu, Yuya Kuroku, Toy Kojima and Yuki Ishida, and Yumeji and Rukia. 
TJPW Offer Match. Yuki Arai, Mokami Yamoto und Shino Suzuki vs. Suzume, Ariso Endo und Wakana Uehara. Sanshiro Takagi, Akito, Makoto Oishi und Shinichiro Kaomatsu vs. Yoshitatsu, Yoshiko, Dancho Kodino und Super Sasa Tango Machine in den 8 Man Tag. Um, DDT vs. Voodoo Murders, Junakiyama, Arashima und Yuki Onaya gegen Saitos und Toshiso. Then the Special Singles Match, uh, Japan, Tokyo Kurushio against Takeshi Basada. Uh, special Singles Match, Daisuke Sasaki vs. Tetsuya Endo. Ja, yeah. oh man, Daisuke Sasaki, ne? <laughs> for the Tag Team Title, for the KOD Tag Team Title, the Champions, Soma Takao and Shota defend against Masahiro Takanashi and Antonio Honda. That could be a really good match. As well as, of course, Yomo Takahashi defending the Iron Man Heavy Metal title against Katsuki Hirata. Then, for the Universal title, Matt Cardona will staff the lander against Mao. No time for this. Saki no. Akai retirement. How, how can you disrespect Matt Cardona? I respect him. I respect <laughs> him very much for what he does. He really makes this act work. I have no time for it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Dramatic Dream Dragon Sandra got so mad at his match with Maki Ito. It was, it was like the worst match of the year. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty fun. Come on. I, I wouldn't say... It, I, it was kind of like one of those things where it got so bad that I was quiet <laughs> by the end. Saki <laughs> uh, um, Akai Retirement. Saki Akai, Yuki Sakaguchi and Hideki Okatani against Naomichi Marufuji, Katsu Sadaiguchi and Mio Yamashita. That could be, could be a cool match. Then Chris Jericho had another video, uh, and he promised that Konosuke Takashita will have the best match of his career with him. That is high stakes. I don't believe that, but <laughs> let, let's see. What's you, Dylan? Do you think that Chris Jericho would lie to us? No wrestlers lie. No. That, that's one thing that I refuse to believe. I think all pro wrestling is the most honest business of any anywhere, like any sport or entertainment venue. But hey, even if it's a lie, it builds up the match, and somebody believes it, right? Uh, sure, somebody will believe it. Yeah, just not just not us. Yannick is not one of them. <laughs> Shout out to Yannick. <laughs> And the main, Chris Brooks defends the KOD Openweight title against Yuki Ueno. Um, this is not a good card. No, and it's a shame because I actually like what they're doing in general as a company right now. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think they've really recovered uh, from a pretty down long period. I would say the last two years have been pretty rough outside of some big... You know, you could point to some matches here and there, a big Takeshita match or Higuchi or whatever. But in general, I think the company's really sucked for a long time now. And I think now, like the last few months, have really been on a big upswing for them. And then you see this. This kind of brings me back to, like, this kind of show, like you mentioned. It's going to be a long show, first of all. Yeah, and it's I have be many, six hours. Yeah, I have big nightmares of these six, seven-hour DDT shows that we've watched <laughs> in the past. And I feel like that's where we're heading again with this. And it's really like this card, Then when you read it off, this feels like they just threw everything. Yeah, that there are so many them. moving parts. There are so many moving parts that just don't fit together. It's like we're going to bring in Jericho and also Hiromu Takahashi from New Japan's going to be here. <laughs> Jiro's coming in. We're going to have Saki's retirement match. And the title, like, and the, the title match isn't even that well built up, to be honest, uh, no. with you, with you, I know, but, like, we're gonna have everything here, like, all these singles matches, all these major matches, and stuff that you probably won't see on any other DDG show, we're gonna put them all in this show. Uh, so, they've crammed this and filled it to the brim with stuff, I just, none of this is really grabbing my heart, to be honest. I'm not with looking you. forward to this show. I think the Saki Akai match will be the emotional apex of the that's show. Like for the Kurokin today, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I'm looking forward to. And I think the title, I, I, it feels like Ueno has not done anything for a long time now uh, for me. And I like him as a wrestler, a talented guy, mm -hmm. nothing against his ability. Just, he's just not a hot performer right now. <laughs> and maybe this will be the start of turning him into that. Because I do think, again, 
Irie and Akai were both great title matches for Chris Brooks. Uh, will he be able to do another big move here against Ueno? I think this is his big test because with Akai, I don't want to say it was easy, but the fact of the matter is that was obviously going to have all kinds of emotional benefit to it uh, that ended up helping it. Irie, a fantastic performer, and they were able to work the style that they needed to to have that big match. With Ueno, he's, again, a very talented guy, but not the emotional impact or even the interest wrestling-wise that you would have. So this is going to be his big test, and I think they're going to need it for this show to succeed, ultimately. Uh, they need that main event to really come across big. And I all think they'll the- do everything in their power to make that match big. I'm sure he again. Uh, you know, I'm sure that the, the the people in charge of DDT, like they trust him with this, and they trust Ueno, which is a good sign of him. Mm-hmm. But uh, again, I, I wish that they had built it up a little bit better. And all the extra guys, like the outsider dudes, there's nobody. Again, none of that really grabs me. I think there's a, a particular, like Jericho being here is a spectacle in and of itself. You yeah. know, like no, no matter what, no matter what he would do. It's so weird that you have to kind of appreciate it for that reason, uh, even if it's not. I, again, I don't think it'll be a great match, to be honest, but I think it'll be a crazy spectacle. The fans will probably go nuts for him, and he'll do, like, whatever they want to accomplish with that match, they will accomplish. So I'm going to give that match that. Cardona, like you said, I, I don't care at all about any of that stuff. Um, the thing about Cardona and Jericho, there will be two Smokes and Mirrors matches on that card then. Do you think that that's how that Takeshita match will be? I I guess with... I'm, I'm guessing that Don Kellis will be ringside and pulling some shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Like, great. You know? Yeah, great. I could see them, maybe, like Jericho doing all of his fantasy booking that he would want to do in a DDT match. Oh, uh, I guess that, oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, hey, I'm going to wrestle a DDT match, then we're going to make it the most DDT match that ever DDT'd in DDT's history. Uh, it might be his... I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be a normal match. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Hey, how about that? How about at the end of the show, Chris Jericho ends up being the Iron Man Heavy Metal Champion? That has to happen. Like, that, that has to happen somehow during the show, somehow. Yeah. Well, that's the show. Yeah. Yeah, one final topic. One final topic we have on this show, Dylan, is the uh, partial card for Dragon Gate's Day- Gate of Destiny. They've set up four championship matches. The first one being Ishin, once again Brave Gate champion, uh, two-time Brave Gate champion now, defending against Ryoya Tanaka. Um, he was supposed to defend against Ryo Fuda on October 9. Fuda got injured like a lot of guys on the Dragon Gate roster right now. So Casey stepped in and they did a quick title switch. And just five days later, Ishin regained the title from Casey. And the sole purpose of that, I guess, is to heat up Zebrats versus Natural Vibes once again. Ryoya Tanaka gets a big chance. This guy is incredibly good for the uh, amount of matches that he's had. He's had, I think, at the point that they announced the title match, he's had 22 matches in his career, and he is already very, very good. He has a great Santon Bomb. He has a great 619, great drop kick, great fundamentals as well. So I'm really looking forward to Tanaka's performance here. Then we have uh, the most unlikely pairing for open the Triangle Gate champions, and in a big, big upset, Punch Tommy Naga pinned Yuki Yoshioka in Kurikan Hall, and him, Dragon Kid, and Yamato became open the Triangle Gate champions. And it, they did such a funny angle at one of their Kobe shows uh, one week ago, where it was obviously Don Fuji and Takashi Yoshida in masks. They stole Punch Tommy Naga's title belts. For whatever reason, Yamato and Dragon Kid thought it was a good, good idea to Give Punch Tommy Naga all three championship belts. The worst wrestler on the roster in storyline. <laughs> and in shoot, maybe, too. Uh, and they, their belts got stolen by Yoshida and Don Fuji. And they team with the bodyguard, of course, in Osaka. For the Open the Twin Gate title, they announced uh, Suzumu Mochizuki and Yasushi Kanda defending against Yuki Yoshioka and Dragon Daya. And I 
am of the belief that this will be the end of the line for Suzumu and Kanda as champions right now. They've had a good run, but uh, Yoshioka and Daya being champions feels like something that they would want to do. And in the main, Madoka Kikuta against Big Boss Shimizu. They've been building up that quite well as uh, as well, especially with Shimizu beating all of the Reiwa 6 or of the Reiwa 5. So Madoka Kikuta would be the final one. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that card. I think the matches they will deliver. Yeah, me too. Like a lot of their storylines are really weird right now, to, to be honest with yeah. you. Like the the punch Tamanaga deal. <laughs> I mean, that was fun. At, it at was least. really fun. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm into it kind of. I mean, it's a triangle gate. Yeah. So you can just kind of like goofy match. Like I, I, I'm into it. Um, the Ishin deal, the title change was clearly like, okay, it would have been Fuda there, but we're going to do a make good and we're just going to throw a curveball with the title change. Exactly. It's like you knew it was going to end immediately, like pretty much immediately. As soon as, soon as he won the title, it was like, okay, they're just doing this to make up for Fuda and they're going to switch it back. And they did. Yeah. Uh, How they got to Tanaka was really stupid, in my opinion. Yeah, he lost the <laughs> he lost the Royal Sambo to Genki Origuchi. Yeah. And then Ishin said, I was never going, I never said I was going to pick the winner. It was weird. That's a fine heel move. But I just, I think it would have been better <laughs> to just have Tanaka win the battle. Why, like it's, why couldn't uh, Tanaka pull off the upset against the, one of the lowest ranked members of the roster in Genki Origuchi right now? Yeah, like, or, yeah, just do something. <laughs> like, or, or just have to, or Genki get the title shot. <laughs> like, if you want to do it, save yeah. Tanaka for later. <laughs> like, that, I would be fine with that. Like, Genki going for one last run with the title he's had before. Like, the fans would love him and yell crazy. It would, it would be a fun match. And it was uh, right, right there, especially, I said it on Twitter. KZ had the biggest gap between Brave Gate title runs in history. From 2015 until now. 2015 was his first run. Second run was now for five days. The one guy on the roster who could top that, you guess it, it's Genki Origuchi. Ah, see? <laughs> Look at that. That would have been perfect if they could have, like, threaded that needle with each other. Man. Yeah. I think that could have been a lot of fun. and They missed that. Yeah. I mean, I love Tanaka, though. I, I think he's done a great job so far. He's very early in his career, obviously, but I think that guy has a ton of potential. You hope that you can get something out of this Ishin reign uh, as it continues on, <laughs> despite how much I don't want it to, <laughs> uh, pretty much. Um, the the Decourage team going for the titles, I think, is a, a great idea. This Kanda and, and Susumu team is really... The funny thing is that Punch deal is kind of like a sequel to Kanda getting a title, which... Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, who could have predicted a year ago that Kanda and Punch Tamanaga would both be champions <laughs> uh, like at this time? But, yeah, it, uh, yeah. uh, but I think it's, like, it's worn out its welcome. Like, I'd rather Decourage get the titles and like put the titles on people who kind of need something because Yoshioka's done a lot of jobs lately. Yeah. And Dragon Daya. Well, he's done a lot of jobs his whole career. <laughs> it's a difference. Uh, but this is the A team, the OGs of the Courage. They undercut their original title run because they had to switch to Yoshioka as the champion. Uh, but I'd love to see them get a real tag team title run for a long time with the Twin Gates. Uh, I hope they win. They might want to go with, uh, you know, bring in Mochizuki Jr. and, and Masaki and do some kind of M3K blow up for the titles. But I'd rather Decourage get the titles personally. Uh, the Brave Gate, it's been well built up. Uh, that's something that's been missing with a lot of these title matches that Kakuta's had, at least. And uh, I think Shimizu will win. But I don't think it's, like, guaranteed either. Like, yeah. if, Kikuda, if Kakuta won, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. It's just yeah, right. like... Yeah, but I think right now I lean a little bit towards Shimizu getting the win here. Where do you go if Kakuta wins the title? That's the question. Where do you go with him? There is really no storyline that comes to mind, in my opinion, right now with him. And they've not done a good job with providing storylines for him. So Yeah, I agree. I, I, can, I can see them wanting to get rid of him as champion because they failed to present him with anything. So yeah, far. it's really more their – this title reign hasn't been good, but it's more so because of their inadequacies more than anything he did wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so 
And plus, Shimizu getting the title, I think, would be a long time coming. <laughs> like, something that I'd, I'd be happy to see, get a lot of fresh matchups. <laughs> I doubt he would hold it for a long time, even if he wins it. But it gives you a chance to reset, because remember, unlike years prior, they have a big show set up for January. They're yep. going to need a, a big thing. And I think when we see that, it, regardless of who wins this match, I think that's when we're going to see a major next step forward with whoever their real plan is. Like, you know, whoever that is. I don't think Shimizu, I just don't think they see him as the top guy. Uh, I think they would want to use that to move on to somebody else, maybe. Uh, in a more better Who role. would that be? I don't know. <laughs> like, it's like good questions. Uh, the the guy who feels like the big star to me, when he came back, I think Shun added a lot. Mm, yeah. But he just it, like it would be kind of disappointing if let's let's say Kakuta retains. <laughs> Then it's just like, oh, what was the point of this title reign? You just went back to where you were? <laughs> like, exactly. you know, like, why did you change it? <laughs> so that doesn't really fit. And um, Luis Monte coming in, hmm. like, he doesn't really fit as an opponent for Kakuda right now. I think he needs to find his way as a babyface character, like, before he wins the title, in, in my opinion. I, I think they should stretch it out a little bit more. Um, he's still fresh, Matt, you know, fresh coming back. Uh, there's still a lot of unfinished business with Shun. I think if Shun can get the title and they build to Luis Monte versus Diamante, or no, excuse me, <laughs> him, for him versus himself, <laughs> what I want to see. But no, Luis Monte versus Shun yeah. later on for the title. I think that's the end game they should look at, in my opinion. That could be the end game by Kobe World next year. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. And that, that's why I say, yeah, give Monte a little bit of time. To and take- it, it doesn't doesn't mean that Shimizu can't have a good title run. No. No, no, I love him. He's a great talent. Yeah. So hopefully they get around to present the Dreamgate Championship in a in a better manner that they have been doing in the last couple of months. And I think this title match is a step forward from what they've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. So let's give Shimizu the run here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it with our topics uh, to our show. I was really happy to do that with you, Dylan, today. I missed you too to go back to the beginning of the show. It was great to talk about all kinds of wrestling with you once again. And, uh, yeah. What else do we have going? We all missed you, Striga. It wasn't just me. Like, we, we need more of you in our lives. Uh, very happy we did the show uh, again. Uh, I loved uh, doing the show as I always do. I've, you know, I, and I think it's important that we touched on the Okada and Yano deal. Uh, yeah, I agree. This is... This is more of a fun show, usually, like even when we disagree or there's crazy stuff happening. Uh, but I do think it's important. I, and what I said was true kind of at the start. I do think in all seriousness, we do have a, an obligation, not as I'm not trying to be too serious now, but uh, as professionals and people who cover this that are among the top names, again, not to brag or anything, but I do think we should cover serious stuff like that. And obviously, like we said, that's nothing we're very comfortable with, either one mm. of us, but. You know, and it's hard because obviously in an ideal world, nothing like this would ever happen. And if it did, they would be gone forever from wrestling. But we also have to look at the reality of certain situations that that's really hard when it gets to these smaller that's companies correct. and things yes. like that, you know. So it's a hard line to walk because we have our morals and our ideals, but also reality that we have to, to look at, too, as an analyst and, and professionals in our own right. Uh, and it's very hard sometimes. So I thought I, I'm very thankful that we got to do that today, even though it was hard. Uh, hopefully everybody listening appreciates that and and you know uh has a, a peaceful life with everything going on right now uh you know and the, the fact is like these guys we talked about we're probably never going to talk about again like, oh, like all hopefully and, 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 yeah absolutely i completely agree with you on that so that's the one thing we could look at as for me uh, i was i had a major health issue uh, last week so i was off to the patreon for a week or so but i'm back in business now uh they cannot keep me down uh, uh whoever they is uh like they, they cannot keep me down uh, but I'm going to be back on the Patreon doing stuff. Got some written work coming up, uh, finishing off the 90s project uh, as as well, uh, talking about all of that. Toyota Tuesdays, brand new reviews. Uh, we saw a look at uh, baby Emi Sakura, like a, a rookie Emi Sakura uh, in, in there. Uh, baby Nane and uh, Takahashi and Momoe Nakanishi as well. Uh, uh, there, Toyota tried to not lose her mind to save this match that <laughs> fell apart almost that they, they were in. Um there's going to be stuff coming on. Oh, let's not forget, too. The Patreon's great. And also, 
keep your eyes uh well i mean hopefully you already know it but remember the youtube subscribe and like and all that stuff i uploaded the full version of our theme song right rainy day oh wow uh, special edition like let's even on twitter so we get to yeah e- e- engagement so even you have never heard the full version uh but i i finally put it on there all for, it's a real song right <laughs> like it is yeah yeah you can't you can't believe it <laughs> right now uh we got some comments on there and it, it is very much an anime inspired song which obviously we love very much obviously um uh, but yeah, so I checked it out. I designed the, the graphic for it. It's, it's, I tried to make it seem like a CD cover. You could you could Ooh. judge it yourself, <laughs> you and, and the listeners it. out there. It's yeah, what do you think? as we're as we're talking? Pop hosted. Like look look at this promotional tactics right now, my man. <laughs> so, what do you think? Give it, this is live opinion. He has not seen this before. Tell me what no. you think. How did I do? I, no, the cover looks great. Yes, it really, really fits the vibe of the song. I think. Absolutely, it's it's it literally rained in the background. It, it does rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, very clever. This is this is what geniuses do, Stringer. You see rain <laughs> and the name, and you put rain in the picture. <laughs> but no, uh, thank you to everybody who, who listened to that and listened to our shows on YouTube or Cage Match or or Spotify, Apple, wherever you want to listen to them. Uh, we really appreciate all the listeners out there. Give us some nice reviews if you can. Uh, just take a little time, hit that five star button on Spotify and stuff. It would really help out the show, to be honest. Uh, so um, if you do like what we're doing on the Eastern Lariat, and I'm so happy that we got back for this, you know, show us a little love. We, we would really appreciate it on that. Or even just subscribe to the YouTube, thumbs up and all that stuff. We really appreciate all of it. And um, right now, hopefully everybody out there can have a happy Halloween, too. I mentioned it earlier. We're right on the cusp of the Halloween. That's a big, big, a big holiday for me personally. Uh, people know if they've listened in the past, that's a day I've always volunteered for, um, you know, in, in my city and stuff like that. Uh, you know, going around and, and, and helping out some guys or, you know, kids that aren't able to trick or treat on their own, uh, you know. Uh, but to, to them, you know, I always say it, we always got to look at, life itself is a, a crazy thing when you think about it sometimes that stuff that would be not meaningful when you're an adult or you're in a great situation or a lively situation can mean the world to somebody so i uh, get out there and help out uh give out some candy to the trick-or-treaters right now if you get any that's my advice uh whatever your favorite candies are i don't know what um what's your favorite candy stricker we've discussed that last year well, we're discussing it again. What's your favorite candy? <laughs> uh, it's from a company called Katia's. I really like those. It's uh, it's sort of wine gum, but without any uh, any animal ingredients in it. Look at that. Look at that. Give out some Katia's right now for trick-or-treating. Tr- dress up, have some fun, have a happy Halloween, and know that we love you here on the Eastern Lariat. So thank you guys so much for listening, and hopefully you tune in next episode as well. Absolutely. I'm glad that you're doing better, Dylan. Very, very happy about that. So it was good to get back with you here. Thank you all for listening to you, the listeners, and goodbye. Sayonara. Worldwide. This is the MLWRadio.com network.